Warning, the Stone Age Gamer includes a lot of bad language. Cover your mother ears. Good evening and welcome to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast. I'm Chris Randazzo and joining me tonight is Hardware Mark III, Dan Ryan. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Another round of painful choices have been made in service of creating our Stone Age starter kits. This month, the focus was on the Sega Master System. What games made the cut? Get used to the PAL format, because the Stone Age Gamer Podcast starts now. Hi, everyone. This is episode 361. It's the week of June 4th, 2021. We still aren't celebrating the Xbox 360, and Dan and I are very tired. That's right. How are you? I'm good, man. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm good. I've been working, <coughs> just working projects and stuff, and I had the day off today and stuff and mowing the lawn because I couldn't, like, I didn't have any time at all to mow the lawn last week because, like, Two of the days, it was like fucking ninth, ninth circle of hell hot outside out of nowhere. And then the other day, it was like freezing cold and I was wearing a blanket on the couch, like shivering my tits off. And then, <laughs> and then it rained to mow because it hadn't rained in like four weeks. So like Ugh. the grass wasn't growing. Uh, the garden's doing fine because I've been watering it. But yeah, the grass just has been kind of like dying. And then no, it rained my, for two days, so now everything's turning pretty again. My grass is like super grass out front. There's like no grass in the backyard because my dogs are assholes. But the front is like, <laughs> we don't need your fucking rain. I'm just going to sprout up a bunch of sunflowers and weeds instead, you dick. Oh my god, that looks good. <laughs> <laughs> that looks great. Looks great when it's mowed, because it's yeah, green. Because it's green. So that's oh, how God. the clovers are in my backyard. Like the grass was all dying off. The clovers just like whatever. <laughs> yeah, I still I still got to put the clover in my backyard. I still I'll live done on that yet. nothing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I will just be here. I will just exist on dirt, and that's fine. <laughs> it's just been multiple trips to Home Depot. It's been oh, it's been a lot, Chris. It's been a lot. I'm tired. I'm yeah, over man. It. I hear you. Last week, Going last out. week was a hard week. It was, man, and, like, it's super weird now because all the stores around me in my town are, you know, the CDC put out the um, the updated recommendations, and if you're fully vaccinated, you don't need to wear a mask. Or a liar. In, in, or a liar, <laughs> if yeah. If you're fully so vaccinated like, or a liar, then you don't have to wear a mask. And that's the thing, like, I've, I've gone to a couple stores and not put my mask on, but, like, I've had it in my pocket, and then I kind of... I, I totally just fucking gauge the people that are in the store and I'm like, nah, none of you fuckers look like you've been vaccinated. <laughs> Put my mask back on. It's weird, man. It's uh, it's not that I'm scared to re-enter society. I'm just not sure if I wanna. <laughs> you know? I kind of enjoyed this. It's been awful and terrible and all of those things, but like, also pretty good for some people. So, you know. It's been strange. It's been a strange old week, Chris. How about you? Well, I mean, last week was, uh, I, I had to do the, the mode install thing I was telling you I was all yeah. nervous about. Yeah. Yeah, that was a whole thing. I got it installed, um, but then the, uh, I, the, the video couldn't be posted for various reasons. There's, a uh, new, th- new, new stuff has come to light, so, uh, the video will have to be amended and then re-uploaded oh, a yeah. third what? time. What new stuff has come to light? Can we talk about it on the show, or is this like an off-air thing? Uh, it's kind of an off-air thing. It's uh, Oh, sweet. Oh, yeah. fuck. You guys are just going to have to wait. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's very mundane. It's just like, uh, you know, I finish the video, and then I'm like, huh, okay. Yeah, never mind. We're going to need you to hold off on that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Maybe so we shouldn't fine. have had you had your dick out during the whole time. That's weird. <laughs> We thought it was a good choice at well, first. That's why we but... got you the new lighting rig, you know? We wanted to make sure... <laughs> Look at it, I'm spinning a disc on the tip. It's great. <laughs> but I have mode installed in my Black Dreamcast. It no longer sounds like a dying mouse when you turn it on, so that's... <laughs> that's pretty That's good. awesome. Yeah, I, I, I like it. I haven't messed with it a lot outside of, like, doing the installation, which was... Not all that hard. I had never really seen the inside of a Dreamcast before, and uh, 
like just kind of the way all the parts fit together the bracket was like it was remarkably snug like i i i've seen pictures you know of the bracket i've had the bracket sure. but until i actually put it in there i didn't really understand the whole concept of it like it's it's all very it's it's a strange piece of equipment but in, you know when it's all put together it's really remarkable i just got to get games to put in it now because it's not like i can throw discs in the thing i mean obviously right. i can just break out my yellow dreamcast but <laughs> <laughs> I don't like having that one out on display because it just makes me sad. <laughs> I just look at it like, oh, yeah, I, I don't should, smoke. I should retro bright like this it? thing, but I don't want to. Yeah, I don't even. I just don't have the uh, the 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 mental bandwidth to like. All right, I'm gonna get a whole thing, a whole tub of hydrogen peroxide, and no, throw it in there. Let's sit in the sun for a day. Like that's a, that's a project, and I don't have that in me, but. No, no, nah, it's it. It's cool, man. And then tomorrow, tomorrow I get a nice, easy video to do. I was talking to Angie, Angie about this before the show. Um, the uh, they just released a new Super Mario Little Golden Book, which is exciting. Yeah, it's cool. They haven't there hasn't been one to my knowledge uh, since I was a kid, uh, and I still have that one <laughs> that I found recently uh, that uh, came out in 1989. Super Mario Brothers Trapped in the Perilous Pit. A oh. legit, a little golden book, an official little golden book. And it is like, it is bootleg as hell. It's super weird. <laughs> the artwork is like, the artwork is all this, some of it is taken from like instruction manuals and stuff. Like you can notice that I've seen this key art before, just right. not colored this way maybe, or it's got like <laughs> weird augmentations. And there's other stuff that's just drawn from scratch and it looks super off model. Like it's so weird. And the book itself is really freaking weird. It's got like Mario chomping on mushrooms he found in a sewer. Like I sent you that picture before the show, and it's like this book's amazing. <laughs> it's so weird because it's like a, nothing, it's not nothing wrong here. Just eating some fucking sewer mushrooms. It's I, got like a lot of the Super Mario Brothers Super Show characteristics in it. Like the story is that like they're from Brooklyn and they went down the drain and wound up in the Mushroom Kingdom, but it's not quite Super Mario Brothers Super Show either. It's really strange setup. There's a Zelda one that came out at the same time that's a similar. It's like it uses this character design of Ganon from the Zelda cartoon, but not the Link design. Like, it's weird. It's really, really strange. So anyway, I'm going to do a video tomorrow directly comparing these two uh, Mario Golden books because <laughs> it's going to be stupid and I love it. I, I hope that you include, um, and I don't know who you're going to get to do the comparison, Maybe John, probably more Ellie. John's a little bit too old. But are the new Golden Books as delicious if you chew on the Golden Foil as the old ones? Because, mm, delicious. Well, that's the thing. The old one didn't have the Golden Foil. Oh, it's, for it's, um, shame. It's the square-shaped one. Ew. No. Throw it out. Don't do that video. I remember the the square shape. Or put shape some ones. gold leaf on it. Yeah, I'm just gonna throw some gold leaf on the side. <laughs> I got a bunch of golden books upstairs. I'll just yank it off. But it, like, it's a totally different shape. Like, it's the, it's it's the same shape, but a little bit bigger than the golden books that came with the records. So oh, this that's was so weird. This was around that time, and I remember having a bunch of golden books that were like this because it's not a hard cover; it's a soft cover. Yeah, which is really bizarre. But huh? Did it come with a cassette tape? I have no idea. Maybe it did. I don't know. I mean. I've only ever seen them loose. This was picked up. I think I got this at a con at some point for five bucks, which is crazy because it's worth like a bunch of money now. Is it really? Is not a bunch. I mean, I don't know. I think they go like 40 or 50 bucks or something, but it's a lot for a bizarre Super Mario Brothers golden book. But I love this thing to death because it's like, they, you know, they, they use fire flowers by holding the fire flower like a shotgun and shooting things out of it. That's how it's done. Like they don't get the power up, the fire flower is the power up. So it's almost like it works like in Smash Brothers, where the fire flower shoots the fire. It's so weird. Man, I love it. I, I had when I was a kid, I had not uh not a Mario one, but I had a Batman and Robin the Teen Wonder book oh, boy. that came with a cassette tape, and it was the case of the laughing sphinx. And it was like my favorite fucking thing in the world i loved this thing so much like i don't know who the fuck read it or whatever but i was just, i was mesmerized by this thing and it was like a like a trade paperback size book 
and it had like a little plastic flappy do on the back that you would like store the cassette in and the artwork was great and it was like man it was just it was this fucking crazy thing like it's on it's on youtube like you can just go and like watch somebody like flip through the book and listen to the cassette but it was just oh it was amazing i used to yeah, listen to that thing a, like every up, day i have an amazon listing for it you can buy it hardcover for nine dollars and nine cents oh that's not a bad price i might just do that seriously the artwork in there was so cool I fucking loved it man those old like those old weird stories that just <laughs> it was like yeah just tell whatever it's fine just <laughs> you know just make something it's cool put the characters in it who cares <laughs> whatever Mario's eating mushrooms? Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> so we're fine with that. Whatever. It's cool. Oh, man. Uh, anyways. Yeah. Uh, you been playing anything other than the show and pad? Uh, pff, no. <laughs> not really. Especially not today. I, I'm, I'm disappointed you have not played pad yet today because the Street Fighter collab is back. Oh. And uh, you should be rolling stones to get Street Fighter characters. I pulled... Uh, I So the last time this was around was like three years ago, maybe? Two and a half, three years ago? I don't know, I was still living in Medford, so it was a while ago. Like, And I remember I, I saved up a bunch of stones. I was like, I am going to roll hard on Street Fighter. I can't wait. I'm really excited about it. And I, it's, a, it's a six stone machine, right? So I saved up... Uh, like over a hundred stones, which two or three years ago was a lot harder to, I currently have 650. So like whatever. Um, but two or three years ago was a lot harder to do. And, uh, I rolled all of the stones that I had and I walked away with only three diamonds out of like over a hundred, a hundred stones worth. So I was like, I mean, but I got, I got Ryu, I got, akuma and i got guile i was like all right these are pretty cool like i didn't get sagat or saget <laughs> bob saget um i didn't get uh i didn't get chun lee i didn't get um the fucking whoever else it was uh and bison and whatever so this morning i was like all right i'm gonna roll just a little bit i'm not gonna go too crazy with it and in like four rolls i got sagat and chun lee <laughs> all right fucking sweet Bought the orb skin, which is Cody. It's like, all right, that's cool. I'm done with that. There's a, uh, I'm going to record a video playing through the Street Fighter 2 challenge dungeons where you are just Ryu and it is the original sprites from Street Fighter 2, like with the music. And you, you know, fight in like against Zangief and, and Dalsim and all that um, by playing pad. It's kind of cool. So I'll re I'll record all of those and you get a free uh you get a free pixel Evo at the end of it, so I'll upload that sometime this week and I don't know by the time <laughs> by the time this episode is out, hopefully I'll have that done. But I don't know. I've I have a lot of work to do this week, Chris, and I'm not happy about it. <laughs> I'm not happy about it. But you should I definitely have... log back in and, and just collect characters, because it's fun. <laughs> Kyle's really strong. I can't even I can't even imagine when I would do that because I'm I you know I'm I'm still doing my best to get to the get through my uh, Ninja Turtles reread you know finding time for that I just yep. jumped back in after like a couple of days off I'm, I'm getting there I'm almost done and man that book is so freaking good it is it really is. like I I might jump back I might jump in and read that one too mostly because I'll get it done before you and that always just makes me happy <laughs> um <laughs> but also in like in in two weeks i'm gonna have like two weeks off i'm getting a two-week vacation nice coming up in a couple weeks before i go back um so i'm pretty excited about that i mean it's mostly going to be spent playing the show probably but <laughs> but yeah, I, whatever makes man, you happy it's just so good it's just so good there was a, a whole ton of content that that dropped this past friday because they update cards every two weeks with uh, with new rankings based like on how players are playing in real life, you know, and you have cards that are silvers going up to golds or diamonds that are dropping down to gold because players have been struggling. And 
it's it, it's interesting to to watch where the cards go and also to kind of play the market a little bit like i i <laughs> there's people in uh in the darker corners of the internet that <laughs> that spend their time like flipping cards on here like you know buying and selling for a profit and whatever and i was like i mean i i've watched some of these videos on youtube these guys are fucking broy douchebag assholes I wonder if I can do the same thing because I'm not a broy douchebag asshole. <laughs> I am just a douchebag asshole. I'm not a bro. <laughs> it's like it's like I wonder because like there's just there's some stuff I don't I don't spend any money on this game like apart from purchasing the game I'm not buying stubs or anything and I I, I do play it a lot but I don't play it enough to uh to just have all the collections done and all that shit. And I enjoy that part of it. Like I like collecting things. I, I enjoy that aspect of the game. So I spent, I don't know, probably 25, 30 minutes doing it this morning and made like a profit of 20,000 stubs. And I was like, Oh, all right, this is fucking simple and worthwhile. So when I get to a point where I need to do this, maybe this is a thing I will actually do for now. I'm just going to keep playing though. So I don't know, man. It's a good game. You should check it out. I like baseball. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than watching the fucking Yankees in real life, Chris. <laughs> oh my god, they're so bad. They just got swept by Detroit. You, for, that... you forgot Detroit had a baseball team. That's how like... bad the Detroit Tigers are. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, the Detroit Pistons? Like, no, yeah. It's the... really embarrassing. It like, is. It's not even That's... a baseball team. <laughs> Be, they just drafted a bunch of players from the Pistons and the Red Wings and the Lions, and they were like, bah, you'll be Tigers now. It's fine. And they beat the Yankees. It's fucking embarrassing, man. They've been so bad. So bad. I mean, not as bad as Francisco Lindor on the Mets. That's been really sad, but... Mm. Guy, he's been terrible. It's been terrible. He couldn't hit water falling out of a boat right now. It's fucking embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> he's a fucking wizard at shortstop man nothing gets by him but jesus christ dude forgot how to hit oh boy yeah sports go sports yay sport team up, man yeah sport him up <laughs> well and like i mean i've been i've been trying to like play other games and stuff too but then i'm like but the Nets are in the playoffs, and I love the I love the Nets, and like still rocking my Kenyon Martin jersey from back in the day. So that's basketball. That is basketball. Well done, my Chris. Bro, one of my my other brother in law uh, was here today, and he's a uh, Sixers fan. Ugh, terrible. And apparently they're doing well. They are doing very well. Yeah, they're about to uh, sweep the first round of the playoffs. Basketball playoffs are weird, though, because, like, everybody gets in, so it's really just, like, more regular season. Mm -hmm. It's very strange. Um, <laughs> like, the Nets are just so good. So I've been watching that, and then last night I watched uh, AEW Double or Nothing with uh, Matt and uh, and Dean. We just sat in a room and uh, <laughs> online and, like, all watched the show together and were talking shit during the wrestling pay-per-view. It was fucking great. It was great, but that went till midnight last night. <laughs> like, God damn it, I'm getting old. Shit's got to stop. Yeah, we had uh, our vaccinated friends over, and like, it's just having them over with their kids was like, it was wonderful, but it was exhausting. Oh, like, it's the it's awful. <laughs> it's like I want I want to <laughs> I want to keep this going, but like, I can't. <laughs> I, I want to keep this going, but do I at the same I am, time? Like, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> had enough i've had enough and i now it's been so long that i don't know how to kick you out of my house politely anymore so i'm just gonna oh, no, tell that you wasn't to go. a problem they were as oh, tired okay. as we were <laughs> they're like well it's getting late and we gotta drive home ugh, it's so far it's like around the corner but uh it's so far yeah it's uh you know we're old what are you gonna do it's a, it's an interesting thing too like my buddy rob was was here the other like two weeks ago or whatever and um we were hanging out and he was like man you really got like you know this is great everybody's vaccinated you really like you gotta come out more and like come hang out at the house and i was like i 
you know, but like the kids and shit. And and he was like, ah, bring them. And I like I really struggled with the um, like I remember being a kid and getting dragged to my parents' friend's house, where it was like, all right, well, I'm just gonna go sit in this weird basement <laughs> for like six hours and maybe fall asleep on this couch that doesn't smell like my couch. You know what I mean? Like, it's just weird. We've See, never really, funny. like, forced the kids to do that. But are we robbing them of, like, childhood rites of passage? See, it's funny that you mentioned that. That actually came up when we were talking, when I was talking to my, my friends the other night, that uh, I never really had that experience. They were talking about, you know, going to their parents' friends' house, and, and their kids and our kids hit it off, like, Basically, their one son who's 10 is basically like John and him are clones of each other. That's good. They started playing Smash Brothers, and it was like, they, John was like, have you heard the new Perry Grip song? And he was like, yeah. And they're like, did you <laughs> see the something about something about Super Metroid video? Like, yeah. And like, oh, wow, okay. And, just like, and they don't <laughs> see each other. They don't see each other ever. Like, yeah. t- maybe once a year. And like after like five minutes of being around each other, it's just like, oh, right, we're basically the same person. Let's, let's have yeah. fun. Um, so like, we don't mind that. But I was telling them, I didn't really have that experience when I was a kid. I didn't, like, my parents didn't have social lives. Really? I can only remember one get-together. This is the weirdest thing, too, because I don't remember it very well. I was fairly young. But it was uh, the only time I ever remember getting together with some something social with my parents was this weird pool party that I didn't want to go in the pool. I didn't want to be around a bunch of strangers. And so I wound up going in the house because, you know, I'm, I'm the indoor kid. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, I wound up going into the house and they had a Famicom, which I had never seen Ooh. a Famicom before. I, I didn't know what it was. And the kid that lived there was like, this is the, this is the Japanese Nintendo. And it was a disc system. And he showed me Super Mario Brothers 2. Hmm. And I was like what the hell is this? I was like totally mystified by it. Yeah. To the extent that I thought I made it up later because, you know, Super Mario Brothers, we had Super Mario Brothers 2. It was a totally different <laughs> game. And like, I've been having some weird ass <laughs> fever dream. Well, cause I used to make up video games all the time. So I thought at a certain point, I thought I had made up this Super Mario Brothers 2 and it wasn't until Super Mario World came out and Nintendo Power released that, um, strategy guide slash mario history book mario mania yeah, yeah. That, that you could get with it and it had a screenshot of mario 2 and i was like it's the trees that are they're weird shaped and the oh my god that is real i didn't make that up like totally blew <laughs> I'm, my mind i'm not yeah, fucking crazy i played wrecking crew and a uh, mario 2 on the disc system at this kid's house huh. and it was the weirdest i was like totally enthralled by it and then, like, I just, I never saw or heard anything about it ever again uh, and, um, for years later because, you know, the internet didn't exist. And it's not like magazines that I was, I wasn't reading a lot of gaming magazines. I didn't have subscriptions to any of them. And right. the ones that I did get never mentioned the Japanese Super Mario Brothers 2 or anything. It was, it was wild, man. That was pretty much the only thing I can remember going to, like, a friend's house with the family. Oh, and, of course, to... I had it centered on video games because. Of I course. Mean, I don't know. We just. <laughs> We didn't. We didn't do it a lot, but like, it would happen more often than not. It was always weird. Huh. I'm like, I don't know. My kids are, they're old enough now to where they can just fucking like hang out and they'll be fine. And and they have so much more entertainment than we had. It was like, oh, we're like driving an hour away, and it's a different cable system. I don't know what any of the fucking channels are. <laughs> I don't know. You put me in the basement with a TV that doesn't even have cable. Like fucking with some rabbit ears. It's fine. <laughs> it was great. So I remember doing that kind of stuff at like my cousin's house, but you know, that's different than going to like family friends. Yeah. That's yeah. that's cousins. Oh, so anyway, that's uh yeah. Show, pad, and then just a bunch of other shit. Well, let's see. What have I got? Not not a lot. Um John and I finished Metroid Prime too. Nice. Uh we just did that yesterday and uh man, the last last boss battle in that game is really cool it's um i guess i forgot it i haven't played this i haven't played this game to conclusion since it came out and that was on gamecube so i really kind of forgot a lot of the end of the game but man the screw attack is so cool in that game the screw attack in 3d like it they worked so well and um the last boss fight is against emperor ing 
and you have to like beat this th- three forms of this like really cool looking mutant nasty boss thing and then uh you have to do a quick little escape sequence but before you get to the en- actual escape sequence of like moving through the levels you got to fight dark samus with oh, the, that's cool. the timer going off and the music is the the escape sequence music from the nes metroid just like all metroid prime style and it was a uh, it was cool man i i really like that game it's it still d- sits at the bottom for me i think and the the of the three main prime games even though i've never finished three uh mm-hmm. just because dark ether is a really interesting planet but it's not fun to traverse right um and that's kind of my it, it just like the first metroid prime it has this bit at the end where you got to go around the whole game trying to find these sky temple keys just like you got to find the uh, the chozo artifacts during metroid prime so like it's just all this not fun backtracking and yeah i don't know it's just work it's just work and it was like oh i gotta go all the way around here so that i can get to this place it's not like there's any kind of like good warping system and it's not like i can quickly traverse this terrain and even there are parts of that that are super fun because like by the time you have the screw attack and the grapple beam it's like you just get to these rooms and using the grapple beam in the metroid prime games is always so awesome it's yeah it's so much better than it was in Super Metroid, and it was awesome in Super Metroid. But there's just something really satisfying about using it, using it in the Prime games. Um, <clears throat> so we finished that, and it was super cool. Um, and we're ready to start Prime Three. We were going to, but then we just kind of ran out of time, and yeah. then we didn't have a chance to do it today. I really wanted to today, but I couldn't get my work done in time. And then, like, we had my parents over for Memorial Day barbecue or whatever. But so we're gonna start it tomorrow after he gets home from school. I'm super stoked. I haven't played this since it came out on the Wii, and I never finished this one. In fact, I don't think I got very far in it either, which is a huge bummer to me because I remember really enjoying myself. But we're going to do it. We're going to. We, all we have left is Prime 3, Other M, and Federation Force. All right. That's not bad. So, yeah. Like, we've played through the bulk of the franchise now, and Prime 3 and Federation Force are two I've never finished. Like, I think that's it. I, I can't, I don't think there's any Metroid games I'm forgetting, but yeah, man, we've, we've done it all. <laughs> done every single one of them to this point. So that's exciting. And, and he's uh, still as into it. He is. He started, he st- actually started to get bored during prime two, during the backtracking. Like right. we were looking for the sky temple keys. And then he was like, I'm going to go take a shower. I'm like, all right, I'm going to keep looking for keys. <laughs> <laughs> And like I just, right, I'm gonna keep doing this bullshit. Just like the uh, the the Chozo artifacts, I was like, I've beaten this game before. I'm not going to organically search for these again. I'm just gonna use a guide and right. see what rooms they're in. I'll figure out how to do it. I just want to know what room this rooms they're in. So I'd just look up the name of the room, then I'd find the room, and then I'd figure out how to get there, and then I'd go to the room and be like, all right, where is this thing? And uh, there's just so <laughs> many really cool, cl- cool, clever puzzles in that game with the. Uh, using the morph ball and the spider ball and the boost jump and the echo visor and the dark visor. Like it really, it's such a clever game. I just wish ether was more fun to travel through because dark ether is like, it's really cool when you first get there, but like by the end of the game, it's just, it's all black and purple. It's, mm. it's, it's not as interesting to look at because uh, the first prime, every area in that game is just is stunning it's amazing that the yeah. talon 4 was such a great planet and ether was just a bit less and this just is and like you. it was it was more it's super organically realized which, which is fascinating like they did such a there's such a crazy attention to detail it's just not as fun to traverse um so i'm very interested to see where prime 3 goes because one of the things i liked about 3 was that you go to different planets instead of it all being on one planet going to different areas. You do travel in your ship from planet to planet. And uh, it's been so long since I've done that. So yeah, I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, Looking forward to beating that game. (laughs) And then we're going to play other M and I think he's going to love that game because you know, he's not old enough to really recognize anime nonsense as nonsense. (laughs) So like it's just going to be a story for him. Yeah, and I don't even know how much of the story he's going to follow because right. he's just going to be looking at how awesome the game looks. Um, because this th- this the thing there hasn't been a lot of narrative in the Metroid games before, with the exception of Fusion. And uh, you know he followed the story uh, and he was fine with that. Um, but because Other M is so 
freaking out there in the storyline, like, I don't know what he's going to make of it or if he's even going to care because all the story stuff aside, the game looks so cool. So I think he's just going to be super into it. Uh, all the boss battles and stuff. He's just going to think it's the, the coolest thing. But Prime 3 also has like voice acting and story. So yeah, um, I wonder what he's going to make of that. I know he's going to love the intro because you're having this crazy fight with Ridley in the beginning and he loves Ridley. So that's going to be cool. And Federation Force, I've never even played, so... <laughs> so we're going to find out. We're going to find out. No idea how that's going to work single player. Or might Fuck be fun. around and find out. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. But, so that's neat. Uh, I also finished uh, Blaster Master Zero. Great game. <laughs> yeah, that, game, that game's great. It's just great. spectacular. Did, I did everything. I didn't go for the full uh, The Last World final ending. You know, I just beat the game and then was like, all right, there's another ending, and I YouTubed it to look, just to kind of refresh myself, and then we dove right into Blaster Master Zero Two. Um, he was watching me play at the time, but I'm I told yeah. him like I'm playing this without you. Like, sorry. <laughs> fuck you. I, you stopped me from playing Mega Man X. Uh, we'll get back to that eventually, I guess. But uh, but I'm, I'm doing keep, this. I'm doing this because Zero Three is coming out in July, and I will buy it and play it. Which you know. They announced the physical edition for Zero Three is coming out. Oh like, yeah, well yeah, I'm yeah. buying that, but <laughs> I'm not gonna wait for it. <laughs> I, I'm gonna buy the digital one so I can play it as soon as it comes out and buy the physical one because I doubt the physical one's gonna show up and it's limited run, so the physical one will be here by like Christmas or something. So <laughs> I'm not waiting. It's Blaster Master Zero Three. I need to play it. So yeah, need my to play that day one. Only saving grace is that I'm hoping I can score the review through Nintendo Force. <laughs> right? <laughs> that would be the coolest thing if I could get through. They let me write the preview on it. So, which they've is actually, uh, they've given it to me, Chris. I'm sorry. You son they, of didn't, <laughs> they didn't want to tell you. They wanted me to break <laughs> the news to you. I'm doing it. Uh, so, yeah, they, uh, they, they announced. I finished writing my preview and then they announced the physical edition after I had gotten, I directly contacted Inti Creates. So I was like, I write for Nintendo Force. I'm a little unclear on the physical editions that are coming out in Japan and if there are any plans for a physical edition in the States. They're like, we have nothing to announce at this time. Then two days later, they were like, yeah, limited run, let's do it. Son of a bitch. <laughs> you pricks. So I was, so Give like, me the I exclusive. Went, I, I went back. I'm and a journalist. Like, I've got to, I, I got to put a pin in this. I have to rewrite a small section at the end where I said, you know, the plans for a physical edition were up in the air still. And also, they announced a uh, for tomorrow night. Is it tomorrow or Wednesday night? They're doing a, a live stream of the game where there's supposedly going to be some new information. So I'm like, I just need a little bit more time to watch this live stream when it happens, right. and then I'll see if there's any pertinent information I need to include in my preview. Um, I'm so excited for that game. It man, should be great, man. Just starting zero two after finishing zero one and being like launching from different planets and the whole the the gaia system where you land to ref the you land hard to like impact refills your energy uh stuff it's game's so freaking cool man i love blaster <laughs> master i love it's blaster master a, it's a dope game man it's, it's a dope awesome. game they did a really really good job they took everything that was great about the original and modernized it in a way without shitting all over it and added spokes to the wheel that made it more fun yeah, like man, when they did that, when they did zero two, there was definitely some concern that it was just going to be more of the same. But they made they made the Blaster Master sequel. I always wanted there to be yeah. like it is as a real follow up from a gameplay perspective to the the formula of Blaster Master. I was super excited about it, and this third one looks wild with the dimension hopping, yeah. like very light world, dark world kind of stuff, kind of like you know Prime Two, but faster and i don't know i'm i'm super into it the only thing and i'm not more super blaster into, mastery yeah, more blaster mastery the only thing i'm not super into is the uh the whole like anime nonsense storyline and the very waifu uh oh. character designs i mean that look the character of eve was like she was just drawn with a relatively normal female body in the first game and then inexplicably in the second game, she had gigantic boobs. <laughs> so it's just... like something happened between Blaster Master and Blaster Master 2. She got implants. It's fine. I it's guess. her choice. Her body, her choice, Chris. 
And how and, dare you slut shame her? It's fucked up, dude. And then in the third game, they like <laughs> show her all the artwork for the third game. There's like this one exclusive Japanese cover, like a reversible cover, and it's got like Jason with his arm around Eve, and she's like got her ass pointed directly at you. Like she's <laughs> bending over in this very unnatural way, just showing off her butt. And it's like, I could do without this in my Blaster Master games, but the game itself is so good, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> my. Uh- my buddy, uh, my buddy Brian that I play pad with, who lives out in California, um, he was he was texting me the other day because in in Japan a new event started the the Star Fairies. I don't even fucking remember what it's called, um, something like that. But the the cards that you get from it are either two or three turn uh, transform cards, and the big chase cards start off as little uh, little animated sprouts. And, uh, you know, it's just a little little sprout sticking up out of the ground and it kind of, like, waves back and forth in the non-existent wind in the dungeon or whatever. Um, and then it transforms into a flower, like a big, you know, bush of flowers of, or whatever. And then the third stage transform is a smoking hot anime chick. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I texted my buddy Brian, like, just a little video. I was like... I was like, I got the one that I wanted. Her name's Rosalind. And she was like, the, the one out of the three main chase cards in Japan, I I got that one. And I was like, fucking sweet. This is the one I wanted. I think she'll, you know, be the most useful. I'm excited to fuck around and play with her, whatever. Um, <laughs> I texted him a picture of the first, first transform, or the, the final transformation. He was like, I just, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like i know man and he was like as a gay dude this shit does nothing for me where are my fucking naked men in this game and i was like I, this isn't the game for you dude i'm sure that game exists somewhere out there but this game is puzzle and titties like that is what this game ultimately is he was like i know it's fucked up i like anime dudes it's like i i don't know what you want from me man <laughs> not in charge but it is it's absurd you know like a little, a little sprout turns into like this fucking ridiculously over-titted <laughs> fucking anime chick. Is that a technical term? I think that's what it's called. I think it is o- over-titted. Yeah. Well, I don't. Well, it depends on who you ask. In the, a lot of circles, that term does not exist. <laughs> oh, that's fair. That's fair. I don't. They in don't fact, let me the, in. They don't let me the, in those circles, Chris. The the concept of you even thinking that is possible to be over-titted is a. Mm. Is offensive. I mean, have you seen the uh, the discourse online about Aloy? No. Am I supposed to have seen that? I oh, I watched the fucking the gameplay and it looks stunning, right? It's oh like, my god. I'm, I'm just gonna. <laughs> I think I'm just not gonna even. I'm just gonna watch that game. I just, just gonna look look just it. watch <laughs> a long play of it. Yeah, I'm I just gonna watch it like a 18 hour movie. Oh, I have to find the tweet. There's this this magnificent tweet that's been floating around uh, and it's been getting torn to shreds like as as well it should it's been mm. uh, uh oh boy where is it this is going to take me a minute so it's um some twitter user that's going by the name of uh hold on it's a uh, something super manly it's a uh, apex alpha i think <laughs> oh my god love right? this guy he sounds uh, fun oh my god it's 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 wonderful let me see if i can just look this up let's see i, I bet you he wears clothing from wolf not sheep dot com i'll bet <laughs> fucking butts let's see apex alpha blog high value man no that's not it oh uh, yeah, this is gonna take me forever. Uh, Apex Alpha Apex Twitter Alpha. Horizon. I gotta find. I, I'm going through my uh, stream is gonna take forever. Uh, I, to, that's uh, just my, my Twitter thing to try to find this. It's the fucking rapiest name I have ever heard. It's uh, it's really something else, man. It is something that, else. Like just just to walk around and be like, yeah, this is a good idea. This is what I want to do. I I need to be known as this. Well, let me I, let me just summarize since I can't find the, find the actual tweet. Okay. He's got a picture of Aloy from the new game. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And and then uh, next to it is a uh, 
a fan made picture of what Aloy quote unquote should look like. Oh, and he okay. says uh, something to the effect of, "Is it me or is Sony making making uh, their their female characters look all manly and stuff? Like no feminine features." And this one on the right is a fan made image. Oh, and it's like a million times better. Always hire fans. The one on the right is <laughs> like she looks like Selena Gomez. She's got. <laughs> This looks like Selena Gomez crossed with Ivanka Trump, Ugh. and she's got makeup and like foundation on and everything. She's clearly wearing like eyeshadow and makeup and everything. <laughs> and so this tweet is just getting dragged left and right. Like, first off, this is that no, <laughs> no, just, I just no. That's they, it's something along the lines of like they just don't know what real women look like. And everyone's like, you've clearly never seen a real woman because that's not what real women look like. No. Like, have you ever been in the same room with a woman when they wake up in the morning or something? Yeah, like, what the hell is wrong with you? They are horrifying monsters. Every single one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so the the other response is like, not only are you an idiot, dipshit, but... uh <laughs> this is in a world this is the game takes place in the post-apocalypse where is she getting makeup from yeah like, like that that's just it's just not the character like and, god damn it <laughs> the makeup doesn't like literally can't exist in this world like it just it just can't what did she like go out and like dig up plants and grind them up to form foundation like oh i'm gonna go fight these uh robot things these robot uh, raptors but hold on my first, rouge i gotta gussy myself up for it first <laughs> i wouldn't want to not look super pretty when i go out there and uh take on the world oh man that's oh, fucking see, weird so so i'm seeing all these absolutely hilarious takes on this uh with the hashtag quote uh, hashtag my two cents like I'm looking at one right now. Uh, this is from a, a tw Twitter account, Failboat103, and it's a picture of Alex from uh, <laughs> from Minecraft. <laughs> nice. Uh, is it me or is Mojang? Be uh, so. This is this is a direct change uh, uh, change on the way he wrote it. Uh, Mojang be making their lead female protagonist look masculine as hell. Barely no curves or rough non feminine features. Unlike the average woman, like cough, cough, The Last of Us 2, Ellie. Because, of course, <laughs> you had to take a dig of that. Just saying, pick on the left from the game, uh, fan made on the right, hire fans, LOL. And so he just <sighs> took the, 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 the picture of Aloy and plopped it on the, the box face for Alex. <laughs> <laughs> nice. The, what makes this extra special delicious is that it was uncovered that the fan image that the guy was saying is what they should use in the game. Yeah. was was actually created to point out how stupid that mindset is. Yeah. There was somebody who was somebody who created it like as a joke like she should look like this and she's got the perfect eyebrows and the makeup and stuff like that like it was designed to point out how stupid you are. <sighs> oh, it's just, just self burn. Those are rare. Those are and rare. And like the guy gained like 3000 followers from it because of course Of course you know, he did. The, the rabid quote unquote masculine internet was like all over this. But yeah, see if you can find any of this business on Twitter. It's been real fun uh, just watching the responses. And like he he just doubled and tripled down on his response. Of course he to did. All this stuff. Like, of course he nah, did. He, he, he is right. This is what all the every, every woman in video games should be spank fodder. <laughs> I mean, like, and I, I'm not even like, I would, I'm not even saying that those video games should not exist rumble roses right you remember fucking rumble roses that game absolutely has its place right there's no there's and there's no shame in finding any of that attractive or being turned on by any of that like there's no shame in that being a thing that you're into but to force that into everything is just ridiculous just ridiculous man people are dumb <laughs> agreed yeah it's a uh, i don't really understand something. man i don't understand i just don't well speaking of things i don't understand uh and limited run games Ooh. i decided to take a run at seeing if i was crazy 
and played the first couple of levels of Double Dragon 4. Mm. I was not crazy. I do not like that game. <laughs> I was not crazy. That game sucks on toast. Yeah, I tried it again, and like it's not quite as bad as I remember, um, but maybe that's just because I was playing the first couple of levels again, and it didn't... It was starting to get to that point where it was like, okay, yeah, you, you started off half decent. I still hate the jump physics. They're, they're terrible. Yeah. Uh, but I, I was starting to get to the point where the game just turns into, and somebody punched you, and now you're just going to get ganged up on, and you're just going to get gangbanged until you die. Uh, that sucks. <laughs> it's not yeah, the way a gangbang's supposed to go if you're doing it right. Right. Everybody's just supposed to have a good time. Nobody's supposed to die. I don't, so, yeah. I don't know how, how proficient you are at gangbangs, Chris. I'm a novice I'm a, at best. <laughs> you had that pineapple in your cart upside down or something. Wasn't that it? Oh, fuck, I remember. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so oh. yeah, that saved me some money from limited run games. I'm definitely not buying the physical version of Double Dragon 4. I don't need it in my life. I just I don't need to spend more money on a game that I will absolutely not play. No. It just, yeah, it doesn't look great. Like, everything I see about it, I just... Like, I, see, I get what you were going for, but I feel like you somehow, like, you missed the mark. They were going for Mega Man 9, and they, they did. They missed the mark. They were yeah. like, we're just going to make a new 8-bit Double Dragon, but they didn't go back and figure out what made 8-bit Double Dragon work. And also, they regressed. They used the sprites from Double Dragon 2 when they had more detailed sprites already existing in Double Dragon 3. Yeah. Like, they were just like, no, we want to specifically capitalize off of the popularity and success of Double Dragon 2 for NES. That's what we are doing. And then they they did things that like, incorporated some things from Double Dragon 1 with the Double Dragon 2 sprites that just look wrong. Like, yeah. them holding a bat. It doesn't work with that particular character design. It It just doesn't. So it's like, it looks like they're holding the bat weirdly in front of their faces. It's it's not good. It makes me sad. Yeah, I think I, I think that's what it is. Like looking looking at the Bimmy and Jimmy uh sprites in this one, like they are very clearly different sprites than the enemies. Like yeah, the, enemies the enemies are, are more being... detailed. Some and that of just them are. It, yeah. Because they're like being it, pulled from several different games. They're pulling yeah, enemy sprites from weird. Double Dragon One, Two, and New Ones. And you yeah. can, I, it's, I don't know if it's just because I know them because I know these games so darn well, but like, they look so different to me. Like the art style is different between double dragon one and two and four, like the unique stuff they did for four. And they just stick out like a sore thumb to me. Like that guy's from one, that guy's from two, and that's a new one. Cause there's different levels of detail on the characters. Yeah. It just, it just looks weird. It's weird. Yeah, it's, it's terribly inconsistent, and it's such a bummer because, you know, a new classic style Double Dragon, like a new 8-bit Double Dragon, that's not a bad idea. No. As, like, making a direct sequel, but if you're calling it Double Dragon 4, then you have to take Double Dragon 3 into account. Yeah. And this does not seem to take any inspiration from Double Dragon 3. It's all Double Dragon 2. Yeah. I, just, I got problems with it. And it it's bad, and they should feel bad. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I guess the only other things to talk about are the a um, uh, couple of fun anniversary things happened. They did these uh, the Nintendo Directs, basically, like since that's what companies are doing now. Uh, Square did one for Dragon Quest, and uh, Sega did one for Sonic. Uh, did you see any of that cool stuff? I did not. So the Dragon Quest one, they announced Dragon Quest Twelve. Uh, which they are apparently going for a more mature theme. Oh, I don't know what that means in terms of Dragon Quest. Yeah, I, I don't guess, either. I guess maybe more Dragon Ball Z than Dragon Ball. I maybe bigger boobs. I think is probably what they mean. Like the the twelve is the all like made of fire and stuff. It's it mm. looks edgy. I don't know. It's a. Uh, <laughs> But that's sort of pretty much all they showed was like a, a title and said they were going for something more mature. And there was like an interview saying they had never done any dark storylines in Dragon Quest. And then a bunch of people are like, uh, have you played Dragon Quest? <laughs> have you played any of your games, Be man? Because I you made them and you wrote some of these stories. <laughs> I and submit to you, you dark. have not. Yeah. 
have you forgotten? I don't know, but uh, we'll we'll <laughs> see. But what was super cool was that they announced they're remaking Dragon Quest Three with the Octopath engine. That is very cool. That is very cool. That's ever because everyone's been wondering, like, all right, Square, you just got to start remaking your classic RPGs in the Octopath Traveler engine because it just looks so cool. And like Dragon Quest Three was such a great choice because it's it works so well in that game because of how colorful it is. Like Octopath Traveler right. was very uh like brownish, like yeah, it, it, it had muted. a lot of muted tones. Yeah, Dragon Quest is super colorful, and man, that style just looks killer in there. It looks fantastic. I've never That's played awesome. Dragon Quest three. I might, I might jump into that one when it comes out. That looks super <laughs> for like cool. twenty minutes and then never touch it again. But whatever, they'll yeah, have your knows? money. Yeah, they will. <laughs> and uh, they also, oh, they also announced, and they didn't announce it for America, but a lot of people want them to. Dragon Quest ten, the online only one. Ah, uh, uh, they're the creator <laughs> was like, "Fuck it, I'm making an offline version of Dragon Quest ten. <laughs> just we're just gonna do, make this game a single player RPG out of Dragon Quest ten. And like everyone's super stoked, like yes, yes, please. Uh, but they didn't announce it for America, and you now people are nervous about that because it would be the only numbered one that hasn't been physically released in America at this point. That would be weird for it not to get released. Yeah, but you know it's Dragon Quest; these things happen. <laughs> that is very true. Uh, over on the Sonic side of things, the uh, they announced sort of the next Sonic game. Uh, there's not even a title for it. It's just like a weird little demo of Sonic running some sort of symbol that it, I don't know what it means. And it's then like new you know, Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, new Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> Alpha. <laughs> yeah, EX plus alpha. So that's a thing. Uh but the probably the big news uh in that whole thing was that uh Sonic Colors is being uh remade. That's the one people liked, right? That was the one that was only for the Wii that people liked, uh and was only for the Wii. So yeah. like people liked it. They're like this should be on everything because this is a good 3D Sonic and you should do this more. And they're like, nah. <laughs> nah, we're not gonna. <laughs> This is just going to stay on the Wii, uh, and uh, we'll 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 make other 3D Sonic games. You're going to have Sonic Forces, and you're going to fucking like it. Yeah. So that's coming out for everything. Uh, S- uh, Sonic Colors is coming for all modern platforms. Uh, it looks great. I've never actually played Sonic Colors. I always mm. wanted to, just never got around to it. Uh, so I'll play that one. Yeah, and, why not? Uh, they also just showed off a bunch of weird-ass Sonic cameos that are happening in all these different games, and half of them aren't even actually Sonic cameos. They're like... You know, games like, I don't think there is an actual Yakuza, but like super realistic games and like the cameo is like some dude dressed like Sonic. Like, <laughs> Okay, that's weird. That, All right. That's something good for you guys. <laughs> well live, done. Live that dream. So uh, a <laughs> couple of fun announcements and E3's coming up, man. It's right around the corner. Yeah, it's been a slow couple. Are we going to do a, a preview show? That's next week, man. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm excited. I guess I'll think about something. <laughs> yeah. They're yeah. going to announce games. Games will come be... up. We'll, we'll come up with stupid ones. That's what we always yeah. do. We're never right about anything. So. No. I, we're always right. How dare I didn't, you? I don't think we, we didn't do it last year, right? Because E3 didn't happen. So yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been a little, we're, we're a little rusty, but I'm, I am. I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited, stu- Syphil. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that more at the end of the episode. But that's uh, that pretty much wraps up the top. I think it's time right. for us to get to work. It's time for us to get uh get to be power bottoms. That's right. <laughs> we are. <laughs> you mean power bases? Uh, uh, whatever. Hey, power base. <laughs> I see what you did there. That was a good joke. It was. It was very funny. <laughs> That's it took quality me a humor second. right there. Uh, it was. Went from power top to power bottom to power base, which is also on the bottom, but kind of on the top. It all works, Chris. It's all it depends together. on if you're using the power base converter. You know? Oh, I always do. I want to be safe, Chris. You never know. <laughs> I mean, you trust people, but do you really? All right, we're going to take ourselves a quick break. And when we come back, we are going to... It's it's time once again for the Stone Age... Uh, starter Kit. Starter Kit. That's it. I'm tired. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're listening to the Stone Age Camera Podcast from Geekade.com. Stick around. Maybe we should record this show at five. <laughs> we do it before dinner.
And now, here's a quick look at some of the other original content, available now from our partners and Geekade.com. First up, it is, it, it, it's just, it, it's always an important milestone. When a podcast reaches its 100th episode. And mutant mutants, <laughs> It's always an important milestone when a podcast reaches its 100th episode, and Mutant Musings has just done so in the most comic book way possible, with comic book numbering. Yes, if you count the episodes of Mutant Musings Evolution towards the overall numbers of Mutant Musings episodes, and you toss in all the unnumbered specials, you get 100. And just to keep things confusing... The next episode will indeed be Mutant Musings Evolution, Episode 11. <laughs> so what did Jonathan and Patty do to celebrate <laughs> so their, <comic> book. <laughs> their sort of centennial? They counted down their top 100 favorite mutants. That was my idea, by the way. It's a good idea. I, I don't told, know if I, I could go through 100. I told Joe, he was, he was like, we're coming up on our 100th episode, we want to do something special, I don't know what to do. I was like, you should count down your favorite 100 mutants. He was like, oh my god. I was like, yeah, that's a big undertaking. He's like, yeah, it is. But it's such a good idea, I think we have to do it? It's <laughs> <laughs> like, you're welcome. Good Take that you. one run. <laughs> that's, man, I don't know. Top 10, sure. <laughs> 20, I think, is put... Like, are there a hundred good mutants to be on your top 100? Only one way to find out, Dan. As you fucking getting down into, like, marrow and husk. <laughs> Bottom of the barrel here. Anyway, they uh, learn all about Jonathan and Patty's top 100 favorite mutants in Mutant Musings episode 100, 100th episode extravaganza. Next, it's always an important milestone when a podcast reaches its second episode. <laughs> a theater near you has just done so in spectacular fashion. For our second attempt to be entertaining while talking about movies, Paul, Sean, and myself discussed the virtues of the ever-wonderful movie adaptation of The A-Team. The A-Team. <laughs> it's got Liam Neeson, it's got Rampage Jackson, a flying tank, and a lot of confusing plot points. But does it stand the test of time, especially considering that it's sort of bombed at the box office? <laughs> Will Sean be able to earn enough arcade tickets to buy a new television? Did Paul Ooh. mistakenly watch the entire TV series instead of the movie? <laughs> what happened when Sean met Mr. T as a child? Find Ooh. out on A Theater Near You, Episode 2, The A-Team. It was a hell of a story, man. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that sounds... Man, finally, Chris, <laughs> I wanted to point out just how important and special of a milestone it is when a podcast <laughs> reaches its 100th episode and wouldn't you fucking know it the weekend rental boys have just done so in the most weekend rentally way possible <laughs> by simply recording just an episode of their podcast <laughs> because much like us they're like oh it is shit no they did stuff <laughs> Oh, they wrote something. a big old 100 on it. it nah, that's fine. That's more than we do. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 360. We didn't cover the three... Anyway. They discuss what they refer to as a dire desert island scenario where the only good news is the ability to bring 10 games with them. How they'll play these games on said island is a mystery, but I'm sure they'll address it on the show. They also spend some time reminiscing about some of their favorite podcast memories, like the episode where the Stone Age Gamer guys uh, guest guested on the uh, show. It was fucking brilliant. You guys should check that one out. Um, you know, it's it's a thing you do when you get to 100 episodes. You look back and you're like, oh, remember when Dan and Chris were here? It was great. Ah, to be that young. Be sure to check out Weekend Rental Episode 100, The Gamers Get Stranded. For all this great content and more from us and our partners, be sure to keep your eyes on Geekade.com. Uh, we're marooned, just like the name of this cartoon. Fuck, Red and Stimpy was so good.
and we are back. It is time for the Sega Master System Stone Age Starter Kit. So just to, to catch you up, we are once a month for the next two years, well, a little <laughs> less than two years now, uh, we're going right. to be doing this thing where we uh, you get a system and any accessory required to play whatever games you uh, you put on your list, but you have $100 to spend on games to start out on that platform. Now, we know that this is a world where digital things exist. Yes, there are better ways to spend $100 than just buying your loose carts or whatever, but this is an exercise in having fun. Uh, so And building a collection. That's right. It's it's about building a collection, and it, it, it rouses some interesting discussions. So, yeah. this week, we had $100 to spend on Sega Master System games. Now, uh... Dan, you said you had 12 games? I have 12 games, yes. And I came up with nine, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. So, Dan, you should go first. Uh, okay. We'll just, we'll just take turns until we're done. All right. Well, the uh, the other thing we, we have to mention about this, again, I made the first three of my lists when we came up with this idea over three months ago, so admittedly, my prices may have changed, and... We are also looking at both North American and PAL prices. Right. Because, because if we just did North American, we'd each have two games and they would both somehow be Golden Axe. Also, like, oh. the, the prices, uh, the, the, you know, it's, the, PAL, the PAL games work fine in America. So yeah, it's not like do. we're talking about getting Famicom Disk System games to shove into your NES. It's not, it's not, that's not what we're playing. So uh, the, the, we should this we works. should try that though we should it's like you know that guy who asked me why his N64 games would work as Dreamcast. <laughs> well, you see, you have to take out the disk drive, and then you can fit them right in there. <laughs> you just pop them right in there, <laughs> and they still don't work, but they at least fit in the fucking machine now, you <laughs> asshole. <laughs> you just... can close the lid. <laughs> I mean, you just got your fucking elevator doesn't go all the way to the top, huh? It's just a couple floors short. Anyway. So, Any hoosers, let's do this thing. The first game on my list... Alphabetical order. Yes, alphabetical order. The, uh, the first game on my list, Chris, is a game that I have very, very, very fond memories of. And it is a game called Action Fighter. And uh, at the time that I looked at my list, it was a $5 game. Now, hmm. Action Fighter is uh, kind of like Spy Hunter, a little bit. Spy Hunter and Jace. Um... Same basic idea, you, you start off uh, as a motorcycle in Action Fighter, and you're kind of weaving in and out of traffic, and you're, you know, shooting at shit. It, it's, it is a, it, it's a, a shooter, right? It, it is a vertical shooter, um, but as you're going throughout the level, there will be, like, red Sega trucks that pop out. Again, very reminiscent of Spy Hunter, and you drive in, and you get a weapon upgrade. All right, cool. But also, as you're going throughout the levels, you collect um, you collect letters, and as you collect these letter icons, your motorcycle eventually turns into a sports car, which is cool. And then you're like going, you know, faster and whatever. And then you collect some more letters, and your sports car turns into a fighter jet. <laughs> and then you take <laughs> off, and it's like a, it's like fucking like a. a Zevious 1942 kind of shooter thing that you're, you know, shooting down airplanes and dropping bombs on the ground and whatever. And it's great. It's great. It is old school, hard and frustrating where the type of thing of like, you know, you're blowing shit up and you're driving really fast. And if you touch a guardrail, you just explode, <laughs> right? You just, just like in real life, just like in real life. And Man, I remember I came home from school one day and my mom was just in a really generous mood, which was not a thing that happened all that often. And I just, I came home from school and for whatever reason, she bought this game for me, like sight unseen. It was just on my kitchen table when I got home from school for my master system. And I was like, oh shit, this is all. And she probably got it like on a discount or whatever, which is, I couldn't have cared any less about that as a kid. I thought it was so cool. And I got this like unexpected game and and really enjoyed it. And for five bucks, it is a a great way to kill some time on this system. Wow, I am all totally unfamiliar with this game, but I've been watching a YouTube playthrough since you started talking about it, and this is awesome, man. This is it's this cool, is so cool. It's just a cool little game. What a fantastic pick! Yeah, I I nobody I knew had this one. 
Uh, I like the the transformations too. They're super cool. Like the the pieces yeah. when you turn into the car, the pieces like fly in from they the outside of the screen yeah. and like lock onto your uh, your car. This is cool, man. Yeah, very great very uh, very much the way Iron Man gets the Hulkbuster armor. It comes like flying out of space at him. It's fucking dope, man. <laughs> I like this game. And five bucks, man. Yeah, not bad. Oh, absolutely. This is a. I'm, I might just buy this. <laughs> 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 track this sucker down add it to my collection this is a cool game love the name too action fighter <laughs> yeah right like <laughs> what the hell does Gee, that why, even mean why didn't this game sell i don't yeah, know I god <laughs> yeah. action fighter super uh super cool oh my surprise, god man. the box art is yeah no wonder nobody knows what this is the box art is your, your stupid graph paper or master system thing <laughs> except there's a it's just, it's just action a fighter mirror. It looks like a magnifying glass. That doesn't yeah, look does. like a rearview mirror. That's a magnifying it, glass with a street. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's bad. What the it's hell, Sega? What were you doing? Mm. All right. Well, that's awesome. Great pick. Uh, yeah. What a cool game. All right. Uh, well, my first pick uh, is it was a $7 pick, and it was the Master System rendition of California games. Oh, uh, I love the Atari 2600 version, but if you're going to get one, uh, I didn't love the NES version of California games, but I do rather, I rather enjoyed the Master System one. I can't say I put a lot of time into it, and you're definitely going to have an, an advantage on me in this entire category. You know more Master System games in general than I do, because uh, you grew up with one, whereas I right. grew up around a couple of people that had it, and we didn't play it all that much. Um, so... California games is on the mash system. As far as I remember is a pretty solid pick and it's seven bucks was like cool. So I did a little, <laughs> I, I looked it up on, uh, on YouTube and was like, yeah, this, this looks good. Uh, this looks like uh, the NES game, but better. And, uh, then I looked up some, some best of master system lists just to see if it showed up. And, uh, it does. It was, uh, people tend to, to regard this as one of the better versions of California games out there. And it's, uh, you know, it's nice. I don't know what else to tell you. It's California nah, it's, games. It's California it's game. games. Yeah, I I can't argue with that pick. It's California games. Yeah, now, I mean it's it's got it's it looks it looks great. This is really a nice looking version of this game. Like doesn't it doesn't have all the uh I remember the NES one being particularly ugly and just looking at this one like, you know, the 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 foot bag stage cuz it's not a hacky sack, it's a foot bag. Yeah. Is it called yeah, they call it still call it foot bag in here yeah. and there's surfing and what is this? This is surfing player dude. <laughs> Hang ten, and it you know it looks nice. It's it's a it's a game that does a very good job of showing off the Sega Master System's color palette, and uh, it's a very much this game is such a product of its time. Like California yeah. Games was on everything; it was ported everything. all over the place. And this is just one of those things. It's I don't I remember my friend renting the NES game, and I didn't like it at all. And then I played the Master System one. I was like, this is way better. This is actually pretty darn way cool. better. No. Yeah. Yeah, no, it is a uh, it is a, a good pick. California games, I don't know, is ever going to make any of my lists. It's always like it's always on there and ends up getting cut for something else. So I Yeah, I understandable. Yeah. Um, it's it's for for some it's a very forgettable game and I mean, it really kind of depends on where you played it. See right now I'm looking at a uh, I'm looking at a side by side comparison on this and it's it's just not even close. Like the yeah. match system one is so much more detailed. It's this is just a much better looking game. God oh god I'm looking at the footbag stage. This is hideous. The NES one is <laughs> so bad. It's really just not good looking and the 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 match system one is like it it looks like a person and not a mutant <laughs> <laughs> and the surfing yeah same thing i i, yeah. I forgot just how much it's atrocious the mass, yeah the mass the, system one looks so much better than the nes one it is it is out of, like a lot of times nes games and mass system games are at least very similar you know yeah like you can you can see like all right the uh, rampage is definitely better on mass system it's got the three different characters and stuff but at least you can see what they're going for with the nes one and like man you look at this it's just night and day this is this is not even the same league well that that actually kind of applies to the next game on my list and i i kind of waffled on whether or not i wanted to put this on there especially because it's a non nine dollar title but i had a lot of fun with it when i was a kid and that is the sega master system version 
of Afterburner. I thought about this one a lot, too. <sighs> it is not a great version of Afterburner. It is a very fun version of some other game that is called Afterburner. It looks like Afterburner. It does not play like Afterburner. It is nowhere near as smooth as you would want Afterburner to be. And because of that... Yeah, those scrolling games on Mass System, all of the Afterburner and... Uh, uh, Fantasy Space, Zone. Space Harrier and Space, Space Harrier, Harrier, yeah. Just those two games always really... I had, they were I had choppy. trouble with them. Yeah, but yeah, they, they just because there's you can't do that on no, this platform you can't. that kind of scaling. But what was what was really fun about this version of Afterburner is it it was this really chaotic shooter. It, it it turned into like just this crazy thing where in order to get through the levels, you just had to fucking lose your mind and just barrel roll everywhere <laughs> and like shoot all over the place. And it was nuts, man. It was like I had a lot of fun with this game. It's not it's not great. You know, like I said, like the the if you are looking for a super smooth afterburner experience, this is not it. But no. for what is here, I mean it looks great. Yeah, like the graphics really, are really good looking. If you can get over the like just the the, the slideshow frame rate, it's a very <laughs> impressive thing. I'm I'm looking at a, a comparison video of um uh, Afterburner, the the NES port versus right. the Master System one, because there was an NES version from, uh, yes, from there Tengen, was. Tengen, which is a, I, I, it's 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 also somewhat impressive, like the Master System one, but the plane is way smaller, super uh, small, yeah, like the uh, the Master System one looks great. The Master System one is a bold attempt to make this game work on the Master System, and you you got to respect it, and it is and a fun I, fun game to play. I'll definitely I had fun, that. yeah, I had fun, like. It's it's probably a C, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's a it's a seventy maybe, but like a seven out of ten. I I don't know. I like it. It's fun. I don't know if it's worth the nine dollars, and I could I could be easily talked out of it. But like the problem was is that most of the other games that I would want to put on there were like ten, eleven, twelve dollars, and I ju mm. I just couldn't. It's like all right, fine, fuck it. <laughs> Afterburner, it is. Yeah, there were a lot of a lot of games I really wanted to put on here that were just out of control on the price. Like, yeah, they just there just wasn't going to happen. Yeah, it's and a tough list. This ones too. Yeah. All right. Well, my next one was another you know big surprise that I was able to afford this at all because this game is super expensive in America, but apparently the PAL version only costs sixteen dollars. We're talking about Wonder Boy Three: The Dragon's Trap. Yep, I have that on there as well. That Cannot is believe. not alphabetical order at all, though. Oh, sorry, I put it under <laughs> Dragon's Trap. <laughs> that should be way lower. My apologies, I, I have it written down just as Dragon's Trap, so I put it as under D. <laughs> My bad. Well, anyway, right, there it let's is. Let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I had it at Dragon's 17, trap. so... Close enough, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't believe that's what that game costs because uh, that game it's my favorite game on the Master System hands down. It's it's an oh, amazing yeah. game. It's incredible. It's so flipping good. Uh well worth the extra money. I mean, in America, I think a loose copy goes for like 60 bucks or something. Yeah, much much more expensive the American version. Yeah. And so worth like, it. Like I I would argue that it it's it's borderline worth it. I would yeah, that that game Definitely has earned its 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 pricing, but man, if you could get it for sixteen bucks instead of that, then go for it. Same damn game. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, wowzers. I love. I mean, I've talked about this game a ton on the show. The remake is amazing too, but the original version is still very much worth playing, especially on original hardware, just to get that experience of what this system was really capable of. And it's a very it, it's a it's a it's a game that feels big. It's got a lot going for it. It's got amazing music. It's uh it's wonderful. It's a spectacular game. Well worth the 16 bucks. No yeah, question. Absolutely spectacular game. All right. Well, um well shit, that throws my my whole thing. I last game is out of order now. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, you should be. How fucking dare you? Uh my my next game is again just one of the worst box arts of all time. It is the hottest of garbage, but for $7, you can pick up a copy of Black Belt. <laughs> I know you love this game. 
I adore this game. And what's what's weird about this is that this is another game when I was a kid that I did not know. I did <laughs> I didn't know I was playing a Fist of the North Star game until I was much older and like I saw the characters and I was like where the fuck like I've played a game with these and it's not the Game Boy one that I love and it's not the weird Nintendo one that I, I was like there was some other game and like I eventually went back and just like randomly played Black Belt and I was like oh my god it's it's fucking Fist of the North Star like that's that's crazy and also the programmer of Black Belt Yuji Naka creator of Sonic the Hedgehog and Fantasy Star so you know it's got a pedigree but anyway Black Belt is um it, it's just a side scrolling kung fu game it's right? basically it, irem's kung fu but yeah painted basically up like fist of the north star painted up looks a little better the characters look a little better the boss fights are really cool um you know there's there's a lot of like a lot of the enemies had weapons like there was a lot more variety the fucking mm-hmm. um the backgrounds were really detailed you weren't just like you weren't just beating up the same three dudes over and over again i mean there certainly is part of that but i it's just a really really fun um fun game to make your way through and what was really cool about it was that like as you made your way through each stage you would get to a sub boss right and that was like whatever just a regular fight and then when you would get to the the final boss of each stage you would get to a it like the screen would zoom in and you would get like this really big detailed view of the characters and it was like oh this this feels important right because this is like a big deal i can see the characters now and they just like as a little kid it was like oh my god that's huge this must be a big i can't believe i got to do this like it was just it was really cool so and they do they 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 have the nice thick white like the sorry the thick black outlines like yeah it's just very a, it's a good looking game yeah, it's a very anime. Like it's a it's it's very cool looking game. I mean, I don't have the same reverence for this game as you do. Like I played yeah. it and I think like this is this is a neat curiosity. It doesn't uh, you know, doesn't blow my skirt up, but it is a it is a cool and very impressive game. Like with a, without a doubt. I yeah. I would never arg- I would not argue with this choice. I did consider it because I know how much you love it, but mm. it it just didn't really didn't really register for me. Yeah, one of my favorites on the system. Very cool I'm a- looking game. I'm a simple man. I like to pin, punch and kick kick things, you know? It's it's that doesn't take a lot. Especially like six year old me was like karate? Yes. <laughs> I'm in. As you will see with a couple other titles on this list. <laughs> uh well let's see. My next one is uh another sixteen dollar game. This one I struggled with a lot. Um but just because the price is what it is, I had to land on this one. Uh, and it is one of my favorite Master System games, and it is Fantasy Zone. Oh. Uh, I love Fantasy Zone, but it's Fantasy a good game. Zone 2 is better in every way. Every, Fantasy... every way. It's unfortunately $30. Yeah. So I had to put, I was like, I can't, I lost too many other things by having Fantasy Zone 2 on the list. I had it all the way up to the end. I was like, I can't justify this. Fantasy Zone 1 is still great. It doesn't show off what the Master System can do nearly as well as Fantasy Zone 2, which is just, yeah. it's its so visually striking. Uh, it was, I played that game at my uncle's house when I was a kid, and I was like, wow. I was really blown away by it, because it was one of the first Master System games I had ever played, and, you know, you know, starting with Atari and then moving on to NES, I was like, well, this is as good as it gets. And then I played this Master System game, and the colors were so bright so vivid i was like this is amazing yeah this is absolutely amazing and the first game is you know it the core is there it's really fun uh but it's just not as impressive as fantasy zone 2 however it has some very memorable music it is very fun to play it controls great it looks very good it doesn't look as as good as it could have um uh it's definitely the best like there was another uh nes port of fantasy zone and it was another Tengen one, and I don't think it's as good as the Master System one, even though it does maybe look a little bit better. Uh, if only slightly. 
yeah like for for different way like yeah it, for it, in a different way it's, it does it's weird. different things but yeah it, well it it's tengen yeah and so it's when like, they got a hold of something they just there's definitely a flavor to their ports yeah it was it was a different it was a very different attempt at this game right because like i'm looking at the this side-by-side -side video and they nailed like the the bases they animate right they, yeah they they flap their little wings they go up and down which is like the master system ones don't but the movement is so, of of all the enemies is is it's a lot choppier mm -hmm. it doesn't feel as as smooth and natural as it does in the master system game like the master system one it it sacrifices certain things but like you know the the visual effects on the laser the 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 brightness of the colors in the background I just think it's I, I will take that sacrifice of the choppiness for smoothness uh any day. Yeah. And yeah. like especially when you get to the bosses, like the 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 log boss in the NES one is like I don't know, you're watching the the, the seeds come out and they're very choppy. Like the, it just kinda like putts as putters along. And the Master System one's just it it handles it. It just handles all those seeds flying all over the place. So Yeah, it's a, it's a great game. It is. It's a very Sega game too. Like this yeah, is a very really is. uniquely Sega experience, and uh, I I love Fantasy Zone one and two. So definitely that that gets my that gets my vote for Master System. Sixteen yeah, that, bucks. That that was another one where I just I just couldn't do it. There was I wanted I wanted to have a bigger variety, but I I cannot argue with with that. The uh, the next one on my list, I'm a little surprised didn't make your list. Um, I don't think it's one of your favorite games of all time, but for $8, the Master System version, and uh, it's important to highlight that with a couple of these because the Genesis and Master System got a lot of, uh, a lot of the same titles, but significantly different, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the Master System version of Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse which was I'm released not, I, in 1990. I'm unfamiliar. with. I've never played the Castle of Illusion games before. I've never played any of them. So, really? Yeah, that's well, why I didn't make my list. I have no no experience with them. The, the Genesis version of Castle of Illusion is a wonderful little platformer. It's great. Um, you know, it's, it's just... It, it's fun. It's not too challenging. It's, uh, it's very kid-friendly. It's all of those things. The Master System version of Castle of Illusion is not that. It is a much more difficult game <laughs> than than the Genesis version. Um, but it still looks great. It, again, has those really bright Master System colors, which mm -hmm. in a Disney game is obviously very important. Um, it is a basic platformer. Uh, there is, uh, there is a, a, one of the weird things about it is that you it's a game that you had to learn as you played through it because as you're walking through as Mickey um if you walk up to an object and Mickey like he'll put his hands around something you can pick it up and you can throw it right as you do in a video game if you walk up to an object and he doesn't put his hands around it it hurts you so it's like ah oh, that fucking sucks okay so, like, you you learn at, through multiple playthroughs of what you can and can't pick up, right? Which is shitty and not great game design, but it, it it doesn't ruin the overall experience. Like, each level has a bunch of different ways that you can go throughout the levels. There's tons of hidden stuff. Um, the, the All the levels are, are very, very different. Um, the music is is pretty good. It's uh, it's not as good as the Genesis soundtrack because just because of the Master System sound chip, it's just a little bit more <laughs> more jarring. Um, but it is a very very good platformer, and for eight bucks, uh, you really can't go wrong. This is blowing my mind right now because this game is it's remarkably similar to Ducktales. Very, yeah, like. The level design, the actual uh -huh. layout of this stage, like I'm looking at it, like I was starting to watch it. And it was like, okay, this is cool, and then it came into the rocks. I'm like, those rocks look a little bit like the uh, the the rocks and Ducktales. And then I he moved a little bit further. It was like that's a treasure chest under that looks like a treasure chest from Ducktales. And then he moved a little bit more forward, 
and there was a red flower that looked like the red flower in DuckTales underneath a, uh, a, a like a little rock structure that had a ladder in it where there's mm-hmm. a rope in the DuckTales one. And he climbs down it and the screen scrolls the same way. And it's like, okay, so now he's going to go to the left and there's going to be a rock there. And then he picks up this M barrel that looks a lot like the barrels in DuckTales. <laughs> and then he uses it to get up on a cliff, climb over the top of the screen, on over to the left and find treasure. Just like in DuckTales. Just like in DuckTales. This is freaking weird. Because it is. Cap- it- Capcom didn't have anything to do with this, right? Uh no, what what's interesting though is that this um I what well, Castle of Illusion who the fuck did that? I can't remember. I'm looking it up now. Um Castle of Illusion was done by shit. Come on, Wikipedia. Uh it was Sega AM7. Yeah, well it was just Sega. Um which is what I thought it was. I just didn't want to say it. Um but DuckTales came out the year before. Yeah. Came out in 89. Castle oh my Evolution goodness. came now out there's, in 90. So there's, there's definitely... Bees floating by. He's jumping onto these leaves that are just... Oh my god, this is ridiculous. Definitely some influence. And, you know, now that you're calling all that out, I don't think I've ever noticed that. Because I, mean, I played it when I was... the doesn't look like anything else, anything in DuckTales. Right. The first stage is like... This is the Amazon from DuckTales. This is yeah. a slightly modified version of Amazon. And I'm looking at the second boss, and he's basically the Yellow Devil from Mega Man, except he's a chocolate bar. That's hilarious. Which is fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm, it's I'm a not cool seeing, game, man. I'm not it's seeing cool any game. other similarities as I'm flipping through this video, which is kind of funny uh, that that first level is so strikingly similar to the Amazon from DuckTales. That's hilarious. And, like, as a kid, never noticed that. Never would have picked up on that. You know what I mean? Like I just didn't, I just didn't pay that much attention. I suppose. Shit, as an adult, I don't think I pay that much attention. You That's should play weird. it though. I think you'd I, like I, it. I man. should play it. This looks really cool. Like it's got the, you know, he doesn't have you know Scrooge's pogo mechanic, but he has like the the butt stomp mechanic. Like he can jump, yeah. but then he can also butt stomp, which kind of like makes him bounce off of things. So it kind of reminds me a bit of Hebereki. You know, now I'm looking at this stage that's uh, you know, in a castle, and it seems to have a lot of similarities to the moon stage, but also kind of not. It's that's a weird so little weird game, that man. That one stage is so clearly influenced by Ducktales, and then the rest of this is all like just kind of built off of that. That's it so a, weird. It's a weird a little game, but definitely worth checking out. No doubt, that's a good pick. All right, solid choice. All right, my next one is uh, not a PAL game. It's the only non-PAL game that made my list. I had three on my list, but I eventually cut the other two in favor of a couple of other of other winners here. But this is specifically the NTSC version because it is the North American version because it is a couple bucks cheaper. Actually, no, this that's a lie. It's the U.S. version because this doesn't exist in the PAL territories. Oh. Uh, and that would be the combo pack of Hang On and Safari Hunt. Mm-hmm. Good uh, stuff. Primarily because of Safari Hunt. Uh, yes. Hang On is is fine. Uh, it's the fun. Master, the Master System point it, port is fine. Uh, it's not as choppy as uh, Afterburner, but Hang On's a much simpler vi- uh, visual game than that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's a straightforward motorcycle racing game. It's it's really not anything to write home about. You probably won't remember it, but Safari Hunt is awesome. Safari yeah. Hunt is Master System's answer to Duck Hunt, and it's pretty some, great. In some ways, I would say it's a better game. Uh, Duck Hunt is certainly has that certain something, you know what I mean? It has that uh, that Nintendo charm that's kind of hard to get over with the yeah. you know, the memorable thing with the dog. But this one had the you shoot everything and it turns into like like you shoot the the flying ducks and they turn into like you know cooked hens or whatever that fly <laughs> away or like a, I don't know like the they'll get bandages on them and flop off the screen like. This game's hilarious. It's got a really good personality. It's got cute little... It doesn't have much in the way of music, but it's the little tiny jingles that show up in the game between stages are really, really memorable. And it has stages. Unlike Duck Hunt, this has like three or four different stages that you go through. And, you know, instead of having your three shots between rounds, it's like the bottom of the screen gets lined up with all these bullets across the bottom and you just have... That's your set of ammo. And you go through the stage and you try to... You know, shoot as many animals as you can with that 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 point system, and like it sounds all gruesome and whatnot, but it's like 
it's super cartoony it's 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 hilarious it's very cartoony yeah i and I, I love this game and they're, they're like you said the the variety of levels really really sets this one apart yeah and the variety of you know creatures like you'll you know, going in the forest and you're like shooting bears that take a whole bunch of hits and whatnot. And you spiders get a bunch of points. and bats and shit. Exactly. It's it's all it's is this is a great light gun target shooting game. It really is. And you know, the light phaser is a pretty cool accessory. I, I I've always liked this one quite a bit. And finding Safari Hunt on its own, I feel like that was like pretty More expensive. expensive. Yeah. Um, well, this was a pack in for a while. Yeah, it was. Uh, either like built directly into the system without need for a cart or um yeah uh the cart just came in the box uh yeah either solid way, choice man yeah uh there was a couple of different flavors actually i'm looking at one now i wonder what this is marksman shooting trap shooting and safari hunt yeah that I'm one's pretty good too i'm totally unfamiliar with that one i don't know those ones but that and one goes for uh, same price, seven dollars. I don't know. I kind of feel like I would want hang on. Instead you want of hang more on shooting games? Yeah, yeah. Marksman you want shooting hang and on. trap shooting don't sound interesting enough for me to replace hang on. So yeah, I'll stick with my choice. All right. Well, next on my list is a bit of an odd choice because um, I couldn't fit Golden Axe Warrior on here because that game is uh, eighty right? bucks. That game's nuts. <laughs> I what really was the wanted- one that I. F- uh, Fantasy Star is actually like loose a hundred dollars. Like, yeah, so yeah. The PAL really version is... seventy three. There go you ahead go. And get you Fantasy can have... Star, <laughs> which isn't a bad. I mean, you could do worse. It's but good. I, Golden Axe Warrior is great. Couldn't fit that on the list. Um, and and really have an interesting show to talk about, I suppose. Yeah. So I went with the original Golden Axe, the Sega Master System version of Golden Axe, which is. A, a really interesting port of this game because you do not get to pick between the warrior woman or the dwarf or the Conan character. You just get to be the Conan character. Mm-hmm. You're just Tarek. And you get to choose the different type of magic you want to use. So they kind of gave a little bit of customization in there. Um, but all like all the rest of the stuff is in there. The The little trolls that you beat up for potions... The um the animals that you can ride, uh all all that stuff is still in the game. This game looks almost as good as the Genesis one. Like it is really, really good looking for a it's, Master System game. It is super choppy. Um, it is choppy. And that's one of the things that really turned me off in this one. I've yeah. never been the biggest Golden Axe fan to begin with. Sure, I, I, I didn't play this one when I was younger, and I love beat 'em ups. But there's sure. something about Golden Axe that never really resonated with me too well. Um. This is this is a very impressive port, but the chop the the choppiness of the animation really just kind of kind of hurts it for me a lot. It does, and it it was another one of those games where you kind of once you learned it, you know, like you learned how this one played. It it was fun, you know. It it was a good way to play it, and I didn't have a Genesis. This is what I had, <laughs> you know what I mean. So I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't play it the other way, and for for again for eight bucks. You know the the Master System Golden Axe is is pretty fun. It's pretty fun. Solid choice. Yeah, I'm into it. Yeah, decidedly single player, but definitely fun. Yeah. Well, it it uh it didn't make my list, but another Sega arcade conversion did. My next one dropping in at ten dollars is Outrun. Very nice. Outrun for Master System is good. Um, it is good. It's one of those things. It's like uh, it, Rad Racer was really wanted to be outrun, um, <laughs> and in a lot of ways, Rad Racer was more impressive than the Master System outrun. Mm-hmm. But in a lot of ways, the Master System outrun is more impressive than the uh, the Rad Racer game. Like it just is this. It was it was a lot of weird trade offs. Um, the but taking Rad Racer out of the equation entirely as a racing game to play on your master system first off it moves so much more smoothly than afterburner does or or space harrier it it moves at a pretty decent clip uh you know it does the the hills and whatnot it recreates the the music uh in a a, an astonishingly good manner considering it's the master system and everything sounds like screeches um 
but uh, you know the the car is just the right size it looks great it's you know obviously never going to be as impressive as the arcade version but sure uh it it does it it does its job of making the road look like it's coming at you nice and smooth the the thing that really puts rad racer above this and really hurts this game is similar to uh uh, Afterburner, and really more in particular, uh, Space Harrier, is that when you get this, the stuff on the side of the road that comes at you is super choppy. I mean, like, yeah, there's there's almost no sense of scaling happening with those. They're just like they're in these different locations. They, like they just pop, 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 and then they're there. Whereas in Rad Racer, Square did this really these really good tricks that made things seem like they were moving towards you way smoother. Whereas like. They had the same number of different sized drawings, but they would move the drawings in between the different sizes, whereas this yeah. one, they just like keep reappearing like a slideshow. Um, the street itself, however, looks a lot better. They, you know, kind of worked a different trick with that, and uh, it, it comes off looking pretty smooth. So uh, it's, it's a, and it's, it's a fun racing game. It's just a solid, fun racing game. So yeah, Outrun, 10 bucks, big fat thumbs up. Yeah, that's a that's a great choice. That was another one that sadly got uh got cut from my list here. Just um I I always preferred Rad Racers. <laughs> so like Outrun just it had it had to get cut. I really wanted to get a good racing game on here and uh I Yeah, I don't think, have any. I didn't think Hang On really made the cut for that. Uh, like it's fine as a racing game. Sure. Uh, the only other one I'd really considered was the What's the RC game for um, Master oh, System? Oh, shit. Yeah. I barely played that one. It's I know what you're talking RC, about, though. RC Grand Prix. And yeah. I feel like that was pretty solid. But uh, I didn't really look into that one. How much was that one? Yeah, loose is $7.13. Anyway, yeah. take your next turn. I'm going to look into it and see if I call any kind of audibles, but I don't think I'm going to. Because Outrun <laughs> is just Outrun's really fun on Master System. It's a really good game. All right. Well, the uh, the next game on my list is a bit of a cheat, uh, mostly because it's not a game I played as a kid, um, but was something that I discovered way way later uh, because it was it was released for the Master System in 1993. Oh my! Um, and published by Virgin Interactive, and it is another Disney title, and that would be Disney's The Jungle Book. Huh. Okay. Do you have you ever seen this? ever played it I, i've never played the master system one i feel like i've seen video of it though i'm gonna look it up right now to make sure i remember it it's is like animated really well right oh my god gorgeous and it, it damn well better be by 1993 you better know what you're doing making games for this system it is a just a traditional uh you know run and jump kind of platformer mm -hmm. um very similar, like if you've played Aladdin, if you've played Lion King, if you've played Even the Game Pitfall Boy Advance, the Mine Adventure, Pitfall, yeah, Pitfall the Mine Advan Adventure. If you played the Game Boy Advance Jungle Book, you kind of know what you're getting into here. Um, loosely, you know, as much as the video games did, follows the plot of the movie. You know, you've got to defeat Shere Khan at the end. I fucking adore the Jungle Book. It is one of my very, very favorite stories. It's one of my very favorite Disney movies. I, I loved it to pieces. So, you know, as as an adult, as a young adult, I don't fucking remember when I first played this game, but I saw that there was a, a Master System Jungle Book game. I was oh shit, this is, I had no idea what this is, and I played through it and really enjoyed it. the The gameplay is solid. You know, it, it's a it is a solid platforming game. It really shines in the graphics, though. Like, the backgrounds in the game are stunning. The animation is stunning. The level the design is nice. really good. And what's weird is I'm looking at this comparison video that's showing yeah. off, like, the... It's showing off all four versions versus each other. And I have to say that the animation on the NES one is actually more impressive. Mm -hmm. The graphics themselves are less. Right. Um, the, uh... He moves like he, it doesn't like have that brightness that the master system. Has. It doesn't have nearly as many colors. He's very yeah. like monochromatic, whereas in the yeah. master system one, he's you know he's got the red on. He doesn't have the red in the NES one. It's just a much more muted tone. Um, it's a definitely NES one definitely sacrificed clarity for animation, which is interesting. And then I'm looking at the 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 the, the comparison between the Super NES and the Genesis one, and that's also pretty interesting because they're yeah. 
they both look great and uh man the the him swinging on the vine in the 16-bit games is such a cool effect it's so cool it doesn't really work as much on the master system and uh, nes ones but like you know him throwing bananas around is is, is kind of hilarious yeah i remember it, this this coming out on nes and it being kind of a big deal because the uh, yeah. the animation was like check out how well this character animates on the nes game and yeah and this it is also very game. very impressive the master system one it's that's a that's a really solid looking game yeah it is and it's very fun you know it, it's a really really fun game and seven bucks man had to do it yeah, nice nice pick not one that would have ever 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 crossed my mind but yeah nice nice pick well, you hate fun so i do <laughs> RC Grand Prix is cool, but it's not making my list. I, I'm, right. I'm not making, not pull, pulling any audibles here. All right. Uh, this one though is another one that uh, I'm. I made this decision not based on my experience with this game, but more based on what I know people feel. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. I needed a solid action game, uh, so I wound up going with Shinobi for ten bucks. Ah, oh, that is that is on my list as well. Only the second game that we have had in yeah, common. That's that's pretty wild, and I don't yeah. know that we're going to have any more. Uh, that, no, I don't that, think that so. Crossover. Uh, I think Shinobi's cool. I never got into it. I've never really dedicated the time to playing the Shinobi games. Right. Uh, I've always kind of wanted to, and I meant to. I bought them all on Wii U, actually, on Virtual Console. I bought like the arcade shinobi and then all the genesis uh, sequels and stuff and i never really put the time in but uh shinobi always seemed like a really cool game to me um it's got good music too like it does it's, it's got it's got some pretty solid themes going on i'm watching a nes versus master system comparison on this because it was another one of those games tengen just put shinobi on nes and it's weird because it's a sega game but it's uh yeah. again it's it it, it doesn't it actually holds up fairly well to the Master System one. It does the vertical scrolling way better, which is, I think, just something the NES was more physically capable of than the Genesis. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, it, yeah, everything else is like, there's so much more detail in the Master System game. It's not even funny. It's No, it's, it's really not. And the Master System version has a life bar. Does, I mean, the NES one appears to have a life bar. Yeah, it is... The well, the arcade one did not. Oh, I think. oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, because it's the, an arcade game, right? So the shuriken it's, throwing mini game looks way better on Master System. Yeah, it's that a was great always game, the coolest man. looking thing in the arcade too. That was awesome. It is a it is a great great game. It is a very very solid choice. I had it at uh, nine dollars on mine. What did you say? Ten. Ten. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. 10 bucks, I, think I, it, I think I rounded up, so no, whatever. It's Shinobi, man. Like it, it's one of those things where it, it's kind of hard to to do a master system list and not have Shinobi on there. Yeah, it does seem kind to be one of those games that was like the system's bread and butter. Like this is this is this is, if you have a master system, you got to play Shinobi. Yeah, I mean it is it is definitely an arcade game. Um, you know this is this is not Ninja Gaiden. You know, this is not like taking an arcade port and making an adventure game out of it. This is this is an arcade quarter muncher, but it it's really good, man. I, I cannot I've made my list. I can't <laughs> complain. Nice. All right, my next uh my next game is uh, a six dollar game called Kung Fu Kid. Now I wrote about this for uh Kung Fu Fridays a couple years ago on the uh Geek Aid website. And Kung Fu Kid is this just really, really Japanese Kung Fu game. Like, it is a game that I played and, like, just, I was like, oh, my God, I'm so cultured. <laughs> like, <laughs> as a, as a seven-year-old, I was like, oh, I'm so, like, look at me being so, uh, you know, forward-thinking and whatever. But it is, um, it's super weird, right? So the, the main character has the most incredible jump, right? He like, does. you just... He He's, just it's jumped. reminding me a bit of what is it, Kenshiro from uh from Fist of the North Star or Yeah, very or similar. What Black Belt? It's just similar yeah. to there. This is impressing me a lot more than Black Belt though. I'm looking yeah, at a video I, of this and this is this is cool looking. So I love on. this game like this this game kind of this and Black Belt and like Fist of the North Star and that shit when I was a kid um really kind of 
went a long way in developing like kind of pop culture things that I would be into and mythologies that I would get interested in. The um uh so the the Zhengashi, the uh hopping vampires, the Chinese hopping vampires that made their way into a lot of like really bad kung fu movies in the mm-hmm. 70s and shit. Um and you know when you see them especially in the game like I just thought they were really cool and the the boss fights that were in this game were really cool. I just again, a very simple side scrolling kung fu action game, but damn, just a really really fun game. It looks great. It looks he's a the, the character himself is pretty well uh designed. He's very yeah. bold. You know, again with a thick black outline and whatnot. It's mm-hmm. just a I mean, it's Master System as hell. It uh, is, yeah. It's very really Sega. in a bad way. It's, it's pretty cool. Ah, man, that's some box art right there. Yeah, it's bad. Uh, it's bad. Bad it's box art. It's not as bad as the, the action not fighter or whatever or it action was. Fighter. No, it's it not. Was like, here's a magnifying glass of a street. And it's like, no, this is a super cool <laughs> game about a transforming motorcycle car slash jet. Nah, here's yeah. a picture of a street. What? Here At least this has like, you know, a kung fu dude throwing a kick. This is a cool game. I like this one. Yeah, you should check it out, man. It's I really should check good. this one out. I like this is this is pretty darn cool. Kung Fu Kid. I'm it's, gonna mess it's with got, this one day. It's got weird physics and like you really have to figure out <laughs> like how that game plays, but man, it's super worth it. Enjoy the shit out of it. He's beating up a frog right now. That's pretty yeah, weird. Oh, the the big <laughs> orange frog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that dude's super weird. Awesome. Okay, well, uh this is this is the most expensive one on my list. Um, oh. I mean, it's not. I mean, it is the most expensive one left after I lost several other $30 games that I just like, well, I guess I got to take that one off the list. <laughs> <laughs> I was glad this one wound up being the price that it was. And uh, also, man, you want to talk about a crazy price disparity on a game. This is this is absolutely bananas. Yeah. Uh, but I really like this game a lot. Uh, I wound up playing through it on the uh, the Wii Virtual Console. Uh, I had obviously played the Genesis game before, and I just thought that this was a port of the Genesis game, but it's actually a totally unique game. We're talking about Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The first Sonic the Hedgehog uh, for the Sega Master System. Uh, Let's see. I have this filtered uh, to just show PAL games. If I'm looking at the first Sonic the Hedgehog for Sega Master System, loose North American Sega Master System, $509. (laughs) Complete $527. So you're not paying that much more for the box. Might as well get the box. But that is insane. Meanwhile, they were pretty sturdy boxes. Yeah. The hard plastic. Also, this is, I believe, the the US version of this was produced in extremely limited quantities. Very. uh, Yeah. Because by this point, you know, the Genesis was was king and the Master System was non existent in the States. Yeah, oh god, it, it never took hold here. However, just, the it just didn't. European uh, the the PAL version where this was uh, relatively plentiful uh, is eighteen dollars and ninety six cents. I rounded it up to nineteen, and this game is wonderful. It uh, is. You would. It, this is a, this is a very different Sonic game because it doesn't have the same kind of structure as Sonic for Master System. It's not. I mean, it's the Master System, so it's not really built around speed, but it's got no. a lot of like cool levels in it. it's got great music great music um I, I i don't know man this this surprised the heck out of me when i played it it was a it's a very unique platformer it is kind of its own animal uh you would think that it's like trying to be the the genesis game because the first area is green hill zone and it has the same music and i was like all right that's neat like i played a couple seconds of this back when i found out it existed and thought yeah. you know just kind of wrote it off and then i wound up uh, playing through more of it just because i was curious and then the second level was like a totally unique location and then that was it for the rest of the game where all these very unique locations and different like the the chaos emeralds are just kind of hidden in the stages themselves kind of like red coins in a mario game uh they've got these ramps where like you can roll into the ball and if you are rolled into the ball and you go through this little like loopy ramp thing at the bottom you'll shoot super high into the sky this is a this is a very good platformer. I I heartily recommend this game. Sonic for Master System is super cool. If you you've probably played it as the Game Gear game, uh, right? Where that's where most people probably played this, um, which is you know effectively the same game. But 
it's, it's better on master system because it's got a different perspective you know the screen is yeah. larger so you can see more of the area around you it just feels it feels better to me as a master system game and yeah yeah Love i agree it. entirely i am i'm a little surprised you didn't go with uh sonic 2 on the master system yeah uh, it's cheaper and genuine generally more well regarded yeah the the thing is like the the other sonic games people like them better there's something about the first one for me that really hit home. Uh, when I played through this and Sonic 2 on the Master System when I, on the Wii Virtual Console, and I discovered both of them there. And I, I feel like on paper, Sonic 2 for Master System is a better game. Like, no question. But there was something about the first one that really stuck with me. Uh, it was... Uh, there was like this this certain magic, and I think that I th it reminds me kind of like how people say we love Katamari is a better game than Katamari Damacy, and right. I can understand why people feel that way because I'm looking at this game kind of as objectively as I can. Yeah, it, it ticks all the the right boxes, but there's some sort of specific magic in the first game that makes me like it better, and that's how I felt about Sonic One versus Sonic Two on on Master System. I just liked the first one better, and I couldn't really say why. There was just something about the feeling of that game. I liked the music overall better. That might have been it for me because music just d d has a huge part in the way I experience video games. Right. Um, so, yeah, I could see. I, I I would not hold against anybody. Sonic Two uh, for for Master System. You're right. It's it's six dollars and thirty cents for the yeah. The like Master it's cheap. Uh, sorry, the Master System one is uh, twelve dollars. Yeah. So yeah, it's it saves you a couple of bucks. No question, but. I like the first one. I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell you. I like the right. first that. the first Sonic for Master System. Such is your prerogative. All right. Well, I have I have three uh, non repeated titles uh, from you that you have on my list, and and my last game you are definitely not going to say because uh, if you're going in alphabetical order, still you've already passed it. Uh, so right. <laughs> the next one on my list for the bargain basement price of four dollars is Donald Duck in the Lucky Dime Caper. <laughs> now, again, this is very, very similar to DuckTales, very similar to Castle of Illusion. Um, definitely has more of a DuckTales feel to it, like it, even the plot of this one is Magicka Dispel. Uh, she steals Scrooge's number one dime. She kidnaps Huey, Lu Dewey, and Louie, and you, as Donald Duck, have to go back and go around the world and rescue the nephews and get the number one dime back. And it's awesome. And again, a lot of people uh, played this on the Game Gear. Um, this was released. This The Master System version never got a North American release. Um, it was released in Europe in uh, 91. And the Game Gear version was released in North America also in 1991. Uh, Japan 1991 and whatever. Uh, but it is just a very, very solid side-scrolling platformer. Looks great. Sounds pretty good. Um, the Great American Forest, the Andes Mountains were uh, levels that I really liked. Magicka's Castle was a cool castle at the end of the game. It is a, a pretty basic platformer, but it is super fun. And if you can pick it up for four bucks um, and walk around and hit shit with a hammer as Donald Duck, uh, then I would suggest that you <laughs> do so. <laughs> It's a hell of an endorsement. I like it. Yeah, it, it the the biggest different the biggest difference between the the Master System version and the Game Gear version is that you could backtrack in the Master System version, whereas I don't know why that was a choice that they made in the Game Gear version where you could not, um, but you could. <laughs> so okay, there you go. There's the thing. Well, uh, my filler game that I'm sure is not on your list, but uh. I had $2 left, so I went on price charting, and I looked up what all the cheapest Master System games were, and I came across, <laughs> uh, for the, the whopping price of $2, World Soccer. Ooh. And I, I, don't, I don't know that one. I've never played it before, but I'm looking, I've looked at some gameplay video of it, and it looks adorable. It looks like a, just a solid 8-bit soccer game. Like... I don't know. I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's 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 a nice looking soccer game. It's a it's got bold looking characters. It looks nicer than NES soccer. Um, I think this may have released in America as Great Soccer. Uh, okay. Is this the same game as Great Soccer? 
Let me see. Great Super... Oh, no, this is not the same thing. Uh, Great Soccer was Super Football. Mm. Uh, And this does not look quite as good as this one did. Okay. Yeah, looking at some some gameplay of this one. And, uh, yeah, it it almost looks like this one... uh, World Soccer is like a sequel to this. Okay. Yeah, Maybe? I do I do not know it. Yeah, cuz like the characters look a little smaller in this gameplay video I'm watching. Or maybe this video is just zoomed in? I, I'm not <laughs> sure what I'm No, no, it's not cuz I'm looking at a couple of different uh takes on it, like a couple of different videos of it. No, it's a it's a different animal. It does look a little bit more uh the the characters are larger. It's a little bit more zoomed in. They're it's got very similar music though. It's pretty solid. I like it. It, it looks like fun. So, two bucks. World All right soccer. then. I, I'm not going to argue with you. That sounds good. All right, your turn. All right. Uh, getting here towards the uh, towards the end. Two games left. Uh, possibly my favorite game on the Master System, which again uh, says a lot about me and where I was as a kid in the '80s. <laughs> and that would be the uh, the vertical. 1942-esque shooter, except you're not in a plane, you are just the ninja. <laughs> and it is it is a scrolling shooter where you are just, like, running up a mountain and trying to get into a fucking castle or palace, I suppose, to, uh, to save a princess, and there's just a bunch of ninjas and attack dogs and shit that are coming down, like, coming down the mountainside trying to get at you, and there's you just run up and you're fucking chucking stars at people. Like you could either throw the you could throw the stars straight if you hit one button, and I think you could throw them left and right if you hit the other button, depending on which way you were like facing. And it, it, the controls a little weird once you uh, like once you get used to it, you you kind of start getting into the flow of the game. If you hit both buttons though, you turn invisible for a couple seconds, which was really awesome. So like you're running up there and you're you're you know taking all these dudes out with stars and then you turn invisible and the dogs start running out. You take out a couple of dogs. The dogs which turn back into people when they die. So somebody fucked up that little bit of programming, <laughs> or I don't know, maybe they were were dogs. Not entirely sure. Um, there I was. I wonder if it's based on similar mythology because I'm looking at this. I- I'm looking at some gameplay of it, and then you mentioned the whole turning invisible thing. Yeah, and I had just recently been spending a little bit of time with a, a mysterious Murasami Castle for Famicom mm. Disk System, which is I don't uh, know because you can also turn invisible in that game. Okay, uh, and you throw shurikens. Um, Murasami Castle is a really interesting game. Um, it's it's one that I had played a little bit uh, when I first got my EverDrive, and I was like, I had always wanted to try this game. It looks super weird, and especially when they did the uh, the murasami castle the takamaro ninja whatever they called it in yeah. um uh nintendo land and i was like i really want to play the game that this is based on and so i did i spent a little bit of time with it and like it's a pretty wild game and i only recently learned that it has a a it's similar like a sister game to the legend of zelda similar to how kid icarus is a sister game to metroid uh and like its development okay and uh, it's it's a super interesting game. Like you you go up next if you're you're always throwing shurikens until you get close enough to somebody and then you then you'll attack with your sword automatically. But you can also do the whole thing where you turn invisible. And this guy in this ninja game looks similar in design to Takamaro. Uh, huh. You also like you know throwing ninja stars at a bunch of ninjas yeah. that are all over the place. So I wonder if there's some sort of specific mythology that this and uh, Mirasami Castle are are based off of. I have no idea. Really, just, I've I've never, I don't know, I don't know about that game. I will have to check that out though, because that sounds again right up my fucking alley. Because yeah, that sounds I, right up your alley. Yeah, I was I was excited about tomorrow. this when I was seven, and I'm still excited about it, excited about it now. But um, yeah, like the the only negative that I have for this game is that the boss of each uh, stage is the same. He's this dude that comes out. He's got. You know, he he just he he's got this like weird club thing that he throws at you, and that's kind of shitty. Um, but other than that, like this is a a vertically scrolling shooter uh, that just happens to be ninjas, and it's fucking dope. It's like the ninja version of Commando. Yeah, uh, yeah, Commando's better better than 1942. Yeah, that's wild. 
This is it's cool great, game. man. I like it. I love it. This is one of my very, very favorites when I was a kid. The similar, the the, the overall similarity between this and uh, Murasami Castle is like really weird to me. I'm gonna but, have to check that out. Yeah, that's 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 neat. That's neat stuff. All right, my last pick for thirteen U.S. dollars: uh, the PAL version of Zillion Two. Ooh. This is not a game that I've spent much time with, uh, but these games, I think, are really fascinating looking. So, uh, again, this is coming off of me just thinking it looks cool. Um, <laughs> and uh, Zillion 1 looks pretty neat, but Zillion 2 is a really good looking game. Yeah. Uh, I've watched some gameplay, tr- gameplay videos of it and have been very impressed. Uh, I would like to spend some time with the Zillion games, and I would definitely do so for thirteen bucks because I believe ah. Zillion Two was kind of a later uh, Mash System game. I believe so. Yeah, I never really got into what... the Zillion games, but yes, yeah, this was nineteen eighty seven uh, when this. Oh, came that's out. not as late. Yeah, it's not terribly late, but it's it it this they've got this cool like science fiction setting, right? So you're like. You're, it starts off as like a scrolling thing on a motorcycle and you're like shooting dudes while riding this like jumping motorcycle through a space station yeah. which is inherently pretty awesome and then you yeah, get that's, off the that's cycle already and, you're, cool. <laughs> and you're moving around the sprite is big like your character sprite is is sizable and well animated like this doesn't have any of that early master system game choppiness that right that usually bothers me in, in some of the master system games this is the characters are all big and detailed it's got some some just badass music motorcycle chase scenes like it's it's just really awesome i think it's based on an anime which is why this never turned into like similar to un squadron which is why this game's kind of trapped where it is uh because i think it is based off a specific anime property which is a bummer because this seems like this seems like this was going to be one of sega's big things and uh, i'm sad that it never really took off further than the master system because like this is cool. Like, yeah, there's look, something about it looks this really cool. cool. Yeah, it's just it's a run and gun, really solid looking action game. And I, I, again, I haven't played it myself, so I can't say for sure. But for twelve bucks, this just looked like the right call for me. And yeah, I mean, it, it looks cool. It definitely looks like a game that I should love. You know, this I don't, I don't know why I never got into it. I don't, I don't really have a good reason. Probably just didn't have it. That's just yeah, the way it was. It was you know, yeah, we didn't get to choose the games that we wanted back then. Yeah, that's a very good point. All right, well, my final game then is uh, was going to be Wonder Boy, um, but I also had Shinobi and Wonder Boy on here where, as our, my only repeats. Mm-hmm. So my final game ends up being the thirteen dollar Spellcaster. 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 All right, so Spellcaster is this really. Um, really weird kind of mishmash of games came out in 1989 um and what is what's interesting about it is that when you start off the game it you're it's like a first person point and click kind of thing uh-huh and as you make your way through the game it turns into a side scrolling action game where you're like fighting demons and spirits and like crazy shit and you've got um fireballs that you like can charge up and and throw across the screen and it's just a really solid action game it's got really really nice graphics really cool enemies um music again was pretty good in this but uh, it's master system right you know it's not the greatest yeah music there's only in so the much world. yeah and even if the composition's great like wonder boy the dragon's trap it's still gonna sound like a master system game which unless you're using the fm sound which yeah. not all games did, you're you're gonna have some some chirpiness going on there. Yeah, we got a little bit of a uh, of a, a a graphical change for our release uh, because well the uh, the the white people release of it did not have the warrior monk. He's wearing like this kind of purple thing as opposed to like a traditional monk. Uh, uh, not costume, fucking outfit. Um, the costume sounds way more offensive. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm tired. Um, but other than that, it's just this, uh, it's a really cool game. It's got one of the things that was, uh, really fun about it was that the bosses, well, they may not be the most memorable, memorable characters in the world, 
they were all good old school pattern recognition boss fights and the patterns were good and you could make you know once you figured it out it was really cool um it's a really really good game and it, i feel like it's one of those ones that gets totally forgotten about when talking about old school master system games i mean i didn't forget about it i never knew about it <laughs> <laughs> or or that right like it, it nobody even knows about it you know what i mean yeah it's definitely overlooked i think is the word you're looking for. overlooked yes yeah, sorry that that definitely tracks because it's nothing i've ever heard of it it looks interesting i'm yeah. not sure it looks like the kind of game i would enjoy all that much but it is the kind of game that i would be fascinated by uh, yeah I, I it is a it is a super cool game the the chargeable fireballs were super cool definitely worth checking out and one of the one of the more expensive games on my list but at at 13 dollars, i do think it is uh definitely worth it nice all right uh well that that wraps it up that's that's that our does. lists um, so give me uh give me your list again alphabetical order yeah i'll give you the list my list in alphabetical order and then we'll go over the ones that we cut we'll 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 see what what landed on the cutting room floor here uh so, so my many. list uh let me move dragon's trap for you yeah please please do jesus christ uh let's see wonder right there okay so i've got california games fantasy zone hang on safari hunt outrun shinobi sonic the hedgehog wonder boy the dragon's trap world soccer and zillion 2 not a bad list at all it's a nice collection of games it is all right the the 12 that i've got on here clocking in at 99 dollars Action Fighter, Afterburner, Black Belt, Castle of Illusion, Golden Axe, The Jungle Book, Kung Fu Kid, The Lucky Dime Caper, The Ninja, Shinobi, Spellcaster, and Wonder Boy 3, The Dragon's Trap. Nice. And man, did I have to cut a lot of games. <laughs> well, because there, there were the games that were definitely not going to make it that I would love to include on there, like Ninja Gaiden... Is fifty dollars. Yeah. Golden Axe Warriors eighty bucks. Fantasy Star is seventy three. Psycho Fox is twenty eight. The Flash is twenty two, and it's not a very good game, but it is a Flash Master System game, and that's just kind of interesting. <laughs> um, the one that broke my heart the most to cut, um, and I know you don't love it nearly the way that I do, but Master of Darkness is fifty two dollars. Yeah. And it's awesome, but I man, fifty two bucks is a big ask. I and that's the pal price. Minute, the, but, the American yeah. price is absurd. Mm -hmm. And it then is. I had a bunch. I like. I had. I cut. Hang on. Fantasy Zone. Uh, Land of Illusion. Um, Rocky. I fucking love the Rocky game that's on Master System, but I don't. I don't love it at thirteen dollars. Um, Kensiden, which is another side-scrolling ninja game. Oh, um, I've heard of that one. I've heard it pronounced as Ken Seiden, but yeah. Ken Seiden. Um, cool Spot. That was a good version on the Master System. Yeah, it was I, neat. I wanted to, like, I had California games. I wanted to try and fit Rastan in there. Because um, <laughs> I love Rastan, man. And Vigilante Moonwalker. Uh, Transbot. And Transbot and Ghost House. And Transbot's My Hero. cool. Those three. Transbot, Ghost House, and My Hero. My Hero sucks. That game's terrible, but I yeah. like it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Transbot and Ghost House really broke my heart to cut. But I just, I just couldn't, I just couldn't, I just couldn't find a way to get them on there and cut something else. I don't know. Yeah, you would have had to. You would have had to sacrifice too much to get there. Yeah, I mean, Transbot's only five bucks. Like I could. I could take off Afterburner and put on Transbot, and I probably should. I think um, you should. But, you know, I'm sticking with it for now, because Transbot's not great. It's interesting. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's more interesting than it is good, so. Yeah. Well, let's see. The stuff that landed on my cutting room floor, uh, uh, Fantasy Zone 2, obviously that was $29. Yeah. Uh, the U.S. version of Rampage, which is cheaper than the European version, won at $18. But the Rampage <sighs> Master System game is good. It is I good. love Rampage. I don't know uh, that it's $18 good, though. Exactly. Especially when, we're, especially when you have this limited a budget. Yeah. Uh, there's Gangster Town, uh, which is a pretty fun light gun shooter. Yeah, that uh, one's pretty cool. It was only 8 bucks, but it was like... 
it was the u.s version too the u.s version was cheaper um and but whatever it did it didn't it didn't make the cut uh the mesh system version of double dragon uh <laughs> is very solid but it's also like i don't think it's as playable as the nes one like it has the two-player but right, it, was, right. It, it reminds me it reminds me of the genesis version of mortal kombat one like it's got the things that made the arcade game what what it was so it's got the the two player simultaneous play uh but and it's it can, not as fun yeah it's just not as it's not as well executed like the yeah. characters can in- inhabit the same space and often will just stand <laughs> literally where you're standing and like be inside of you like eh, eh, yeah eh. yeah so that that got cut the the mesh system version of altered beast i actually have fond memories of i do too yeah, yeah that, that's that, a and good that was one. that was only six bucks i was like man i'm I'm like I'm waffling back and forth between that and California games, but then like No, Shinobi, California games wins that. Yeah. Because Shinobi came along and it's like, well, that's a better version of a side scrolling action game. And if I had to choose between Altered Beast and Shinobi, I, I'm going Shinobi. Like yeah. sorry, no question. Yeah. Astro not, Warrior yeah. I wanted to put on there because I wanted to have a scrolling shooter on my list and Astro uh, Warrior is cool. The cheapest version of it I could find was ten bucks. And yeah. like I thought about the combo pack of uh um what was it a uh, hang on and astro warrior it was like no mm-hmm. i want safari hunt more than i want astro warrior so yeah i would agree with that but then you've got like alex kid miracle world loose is 33 dollars. you kidding me yeah that game like, sucks like it, i mean <laughs> it's all right i think it's really neat i think it's it's such an emblematic master system game but 33 dollars. hell no yeah, you gotta be kidding no, me not even a little bit and psycho fox 30 bucks yeah psycho and psycho fox, fox is- isn't that good either I think it's, it's super just not cool, that good, but it's a, again, it's not the, again, the execution is like, it's a really cool game, but it's like not ultimately that fun to play, No, but it is a really good game. Uh, and one of the better, I think one of the better master system games, but at 30 bucks, I just couldn't, couldn't justify it holding no. that much real estate. No, just can't do it. So there you have it, folks. What are your lists? We want to hear. Uh, what your lists are so uh you know shoot us an email to hop on the discord uh do whatever it takes but we want to know what your uh stone age starter kits for the sega master system would be and we'll read them on the show next week uh as is our uh our thing to do so that's right got and if other- you don't if you don't know master system games because you grew up in the united states where it wasn't as popular um you know nobody's angry at you but you know like go emulate some of this shit which uh, you know, whatever. Uh, but there's some really good shit on the Master System that just doesn't get the love that I feel it should. It's a really good system. Yeah, it's it's pretty neat. I've been having a lot of fun uh, learning about it, more about it, because uh, Jeremy Parrish has been doing this uh, his Segaiden stuff, where he's <laughs> been going back... Uh, Still funny. Kind of like... It's a good name. Peppering it in with NES works as like to kind of better explain why NES games were as impressive as they were. Uh, and he's going back to like the SG 1000, which is the Mark one, right. uh, which they didn't redesign into the Mark two. Uh, and then eventually became the master system, which is the Mark three, which is just generally way more impressive hardware. Uh, but it's been interesting seeing the road to getting to master system from the SG 1000, which is like effectively the same system architecture as the Coleco vision, which is wild. Yeah. Um. Not really noted. Like seeing what they pulled off with that system, it would be really interesting to see, like, to see an alternate dimension where the ColecoVision kept going. Uh, right. The Coleco was, system Mark Three. Right. What does that look like? Yeah, I would have been very interested to see where that went because uh, there was there was some, some. I always internally put the ColecoVision in the same realm as the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, but it was such. It was way more powerful than that. Way uh, more. So yeah. like wh- learning about the Mark three, uh, the Mark one stuff, you know, the SG 1000 stuff through Jeremy Parrish's channel has been really fascinating to me. So uh, if you're interested in, in like really diving into the minutia of what made these games, what makes the master system, what it is and how it compares to like the Famicom launch and whatnot, because the Famicom and the SG 1000 launched almost at the same time, which is yeah. wild. All oh, the super, I love video game history. Anyway, check out me Jeremy too, Parrish's channel. It's great. Yeah, and and he needs a couple more subs. That guy's struggling. <laughs> yeah. 
he's this... he's also bored. He doesn't have much to do. Like <laughs> works for limited run games. He just does retronauts. He's, he's got nothing going on. <laughs> yeah, he he could he could use throw him a bone. Throw yeah. old poor Jeremy a bone. <laughs> All right, everybody. That is our show. Join us next week for a somewhat surprising return of our annual E3 preview. It's happening, albeit a bit differently this year, and Dan and I have predictions to make. Or at least we will have predictions we will. to make. That's right. I'm going to predict all kinds of stuff. It's going to be great. Who knows? Maybe <laughs> gonna... they will have announced the Switch Pro by then. <laughs> Maybe. I'm going to predict all over your face, neck, and chest. It's going to be That's... great. Thank you for that. <laughs> We are on most social media platforms, and if you want to get in touch with us, we aren't very difficult to find. All it takes is a quick look at our show notes, and you'll see links to our social media accounts, as well as all manner of other fun stuff, like a link to our namesake, StoneAgeGamer.com, the Geekade Patreon, which helps keep this show running week after week, and more useful links than you can shake a joystick at. This show's theme song, Squared Roots, was written by Banjo Guy Ollie. You can learn all about his wonderful music and more by following the link to his YouTube channel, also in the show notes. And finally, as always, we'd like to thank our intrepid editor, Evan, for making the show listenable for all you folks. We'd like to thank all you folks for listening in the first place. That's it on behalf of Dan and myself. Keep playing games. <laughs> <laughs>